did you hear anything I just said? Oh gosh, sorry. And, um, no. I swear, I wasn't ignoring my friend on purpose. I was just distracted by that guy over there. Luca. I know, he's so handsome. <sighs> the best part is, he's single. Yep, he broke up with his girlfriend a few months ago. And today was the day I, Michelle Summer, would make Luca Rodriguez my boyfriend. I mean, his heart had to have healed by now, right? The only class I shared with Luca was French, so it was now or never. I wrote a love letter and asked the guy behind me to pass it to Luca. My heart started beating faster and faster until my teacher, Mrs. Davis, intercepted it. Who's passing letters in class? Nobody, huh? Let's see what's so important it can't wait until break. Wait, was she seriously going to read it in front of the whole class? I watched her slowly open the letter. Oh, man, someone sweep in and stop her, please. Dear Luca, I was struck by the lightning of love right from the first time I saw you. I can't stop thinking about your cute smile and how I could drown in your deep blue eyes. I like you, and I was wondering if you like me too. The whole class burst out laughing, but luckily for me, Mrs. Davis left my name out. Phew! I glanced over at Luca. He looked so embarrassed. What a massive fail! As I waited for the bus, I felt kind of down about everything. Then it began to rain. Great! And to top it off, suddenly a car passed by and splashed me. I was literally wet from head to toes. I shouted out in anger. Are you kidding me? The car suddenly reversed, then stopped alongside me. I held my breath as the car window opened. Huh? Luca! What? I'm really sorry. Are you okay? O-M-G. Luca was speaking to me. Okay, calm down, Michelle. Just play it cool. Oh, I'm fine. It was my fault. I shouldn't have sat at the bus station. Yeah, right. How smooth. Perfect. Now he'd think I was a weirdo and drive away. But he didn't. Instead, he smiled and said, Get in. I'll give you a ride home. Me and Luca? Alone in a car? Thank you, universe. I excitedly got in. Oh, there were two other people in the back seat. He introduced them as his friends, Wesley and Aubrey. Huh? That was so nice of him to give us all a ride. While his two friends were listening to music in the back seat, I got to talk to Luca. That's when I found out that we had so much more in common than I ever expected. He's a big fan of DC Comics, and his favorite series were Arrow and The Flash. Just like me! Oh, how I wished this ride would never reach my house. That night, I couldn't do anything but lay in bed daydreaming about how unreal this whole thing was when my phone beeped. Holy mother of God. Can anyone please hold my hand? Luca had texted me. Hey, Michelle. Sorry again for soaking you. I had fun talking to you. Was I dreaming? I pinched myself to check. Ouch. Nope. It was vividly real. Then one thing led to another, we chatted till late that night, and it repeated on the day after. And the day after, we basically talked every night. And then something wonderful happened. He asked me out on a date. Yes, you heard me right. A date! Eek! And the best part, he wanted to watch a horror movie. Everyone knows a guy only suggests this so the girl will hug him when she's scared. Okay, Luca. I like your way of thinking. <laughs> he chose The Conjuring 3, so I had to binge watch part 1 and 2 in one night. It was so terrifying, but I was willing to do anything for Luca. D-Day arrived, and I spent hours picking out the cutest outfit. But then I arrived at the movie theater to see that Wesley and Aubrey were there too. Seeing my surprised look, Luca said, Oh, I invited Wesley and Aubrey. It's going to be a fun double date. Did he just say double date? Aw, so it's still a date. What a relief. He didn't mention to me before that Wesley and Aubrey were a couple. Phew. 
All the jump scares in the movie did get me to constantly hold onto Luca's arm. You'd think I'd be happy about this, right? But no, I wasn't. Why? Because I wasn't the only girl holding his arm. Aubrey was too. No, I'm not kidding. Um, hello? Wasn't her boyfriend also sitting next to her? Thank God the movie finally ended, as watching Aubrey clinging onto Luca was even creepier than the movie. After that, Luca suggested we go for Mexican food. I happily agreed. Only, Wes and Aubrey tagged along too, of course. Then just before we ordered drinks, Wes received a call from his mom and had to leave. So the three of us were left having dinner together. It was an awkward atmosphere, as Aubrey kept bringing up all these inside jokes with Luca, while I sat there clueless and feeling like a third wheel. Well, that sucked, but at least I'll have some time alone with him on the ride home to make up for this, right? But then Aubrey latched onto his arm and in her sickly sweet voice asked, Oh, it's so late out. Luca, you're driving me home, aren't you? Luca turned to look at me awkwardly. Well, I didn't want to make a scene, so I said, Don't worry, I can call my friend. She works right around the corner and her shift's about to end. Yep, that was a big fat lie. Anyway, he smiled and then they left, leaving me there all alone. I called an Uber and headed home. That night, I couldn't sleep. I couldn't stop thinking about how there was something fishy about their relationship. But then I got a text from Luca. I had a great time today. I was wondering if you'd like to be my girlfriend? X. What? I had to rub my eyes and reread it. O-M-G. It really said girlfriend in the text. So that means Luca and Aubrey are just really close friends. That's all. I smiled while replying yes to him. So from that moment on, we became an official couple. It was awesome. Well, except for one same old problem. He always brought his friends along. Every day. You see, Wesley and Aubrey went to another high school nearby. When I first met them, I thought Luca was just giving them a ride home because of the rain. But turns out, he drove them every freaking day. They often hang out afterwards also. So it meant that Luca and I never had alone time. Not even half an hour. But that wasn't the worst part. Since Luca and I became official, Aubrey's become even bolder than before. For instance, one time at the park, Luca was eating a hot dog and got some mustard on his face. I laughed so hard and told him to stay still so I could take a picture of his cute face. But then Aubrey just turned to him, took out a tissue, and wiped the mustard away. And that wasn't all. She even drank from his cup, fed him snacks, and often gave him these googly eyes. You must be wondering how she could just blatantly flirt in front of Wes like that? Well, that girl really knew how to blindside him. Sometimes she kissed him on the cheek or stroked his hair. Ugh, so who did she actually like? Wes or Luca? I decided to do a test to find out. So I cuddled up close to Luca and leaned my head on his shoulder. And as expected, Aubrey was glaring at me with jealous eyes. Then, as she twirled a strand of her hair around her finger, she asked him, Luca, Wes is busy this Friday and I can't miss my dance lesson. Could you take me there and wait around till class is over? Luca looked awkward, but not knowing what else to say, he muttered out, Yeah, sure. Ugh! Now she's being too much. I needed to show her that Luca wasn't interested in her and that she needed to back off. I know, that sounded a bit mean, but seriously, I needed to make a stand or else I could lose my boyfriend. So on Friday evening, after Luca drove Aubrey to her dance class, I called him and said that my bike had a flat tire. Um, yeah, I may have punctured it myself, but it did the trick. He immediately picked me up and drove me home. Then I asked him to stay as mom was making her signature lasagna. He couldn't say no to my mom, so he texted Aubrey to tell her to go home by herself because he was busy with me. Success! The next day, the four of us hung out at the cafe. Luca noticed Aubrey looking a bit tired, so he asked, Hey Aubrey, are you okay? Oh, it's nothing. After dance class, I walked home and it rained all of a sudden, and I didn't bring an umbrella because I thought you would bring me home, so I got drenched. I glanced at Luca, and I could see he was feeling really guilty. 
After chatting a bit, I went to the restroom to freshen up. That's when I caught Aubrey dabbing powder on her face to make her look paler. I couldn't believe it! That's so not cool! I needed to confront this big fat liar! Do you seriously think guilt tripping Luca will make him love you? I don't have to make him do anything, because he already loves me. With a shocked look, I spluttered out, What did you just say? Oh, didn't he tell you? Luca and I used to date, but then I got tired of him and broke up with him. He was so devastated. Now, seeing him with you, I realized I made a mistake. He should be with me. My god, I couldn't believe what she just said. How could he hide this from me? I couldn't contain my anger anymore. You're just a psycho who likes to play dirty tricks all the time. Then I stormed out of the restroom and bumped into Luca. Did you just yell at Aubrey? Don't be so mean. She got sick because I hung out with you yesterday. Ugh, just great. Now Luca only overheard me screaming and thought I was the meanie now. But then I realized Aubrey was right. Luca was clearly still in love with her because if he wasn't, he would have asked for my side of the story first before defending her so quickly. Luca, I think we should break up, as you clearly still have feelings for Aubrey. Then without letting him say anything, I brushed past him and left. The next day, I decided to wake up early and go for a run, to try and clear my head. But as soon as I opened the door, I saw Luca standing there. I acted like he was invisible and was about to walk away, but he grabbed my arm and said, Please, Michelle, at least hear me out. So, we sat on the porch, and Luca opened up to me. Turns out, it was true that Luca and Aubrey used to date, but they argued all the time, so he ended things with her, and they stayed friends. He didn't mention their past relationship to me because he thought it wasn't a big deal, as it's all over now. He said that after I broke up with him, he spoke to Aubrey to figure out what had happened between me and her. Then she confessed that she was still in love with him and was only dating Wesley so she could be around him. Luca rejected her, and she started crying, which caused her makeup to smudge. That's when he realized I was right about her faking being sick, and he made it clear that her sneaky behavior meant they couldn't be friends anymore. Michelle, I'm sorry. I should have seen what she was doing and put you first. I promise it won't happen again. Poor Luca. I couldn't stand seeing him looking so gloomy. To be fair, all he did was just trying to be a good friend to Aubrey. He deserved another chance, right? So, smiling, I gave him a big hug. From that moment on, things between us were great again. Wesley eventually found out that Aubrey was only using him to get close to Luca. So he broke up with her. Our love story was surely a bumpy ride, but it was all worth it. Because I truly love Luca. And I also love how he cares about his friends and wants to spend time with them. So I only asked him for some alone time every Friday. Talking of Fridays, I can't wait for this one. As Wesley told me that Luca's prepared something special for me. Eek! I'm so excited! Sorry guys, but you won't know what it is, as my story has to end here. Maybe next time! <laughs> Not every day a girl outside the aerospace community like me could attend this creative science festival thingy, but here I was, all thanks to my genius boyfriend Mike, who just got accepted into MIT's aerospace engineering program. This is all really interesting. So great that Mike brought me here. Hey, you ruined my project. Who are you? Sorry, I, I'm Mike's, Mike? I can't believe he's talking to another girl when his girlfriend is in trouble here. The girl followed Mike and immediately fixed the model I just broke. Such an unfortunate brain behind her flashy clothes. Shh, keep it down. She's Mike's girlfriend. Really? Our valedictorian is into airheads? Huh? I thought Mike and Liana were a thing. Liana, the pretty girl who just fixed a freaking spacecraft model in a split second is being paired with my boyfriend? I'm Chloe, by the way. Sorry, I didn't introduce myself sooner. I just, ugh, never felt so self-conscious before. Mike and I have been together since high school. Back then, I was popular and had many boys chasing me. Everyone seemed amazed that a girl like me was with a nerd like him. But now, Mike's already an intern at NASA despite being only a freshman. 
Looks like he's a celebrity among his peers, and I was just his brainless girlfriend. For the first time ever, I felt like I had no place being such an elite student's girlfriend. I couldn't stop thinking about what happened at the science festival, so I decided to talk about it in my talk show, Bubble Buzz. Although I didn't show my face, I had heaps of listeners and every time the show was on, they flooded my comments section with excitement. Welcome back, my friends! So today's topic is, can a person's heart change when they go to college? I have a friend, Sally. She's been with her boyfriend for two years, 10 months and 21 days. But now he's gone to college in another state, living among new friends and new girls. Should she be worried that she'll become old news? Obviously, out of sight, out of mind, your friend should dump him before he does. No matter how good a relationship is, it can't escape the three-year curse. The three-year thing is real. All high school romances are doomed in the real world. Mike and I had been together for almost three years. Was this three-year curse really hitting us? Every comment seemed to believe it, while user Twinkle Star seemed to think this whole curse was silly. Curses don't exist. Relationships aren't easy. Both partners have to be willing to make an effort in their long-term relationship. Two years or ten years, it's irrelevant. Why does someone as serious as Twinkle Star listen to my show anyway? Since my early days hosting the show, this person always comments with confusing and boring quotes. I'm sure the curse was not a silly thing at all. Whether it was my three-year friendship with my first best friend Ella, or my parents divorcing after three years of marriage, the three-year milestone was real. Actually, I do know one couple who beat the curse. They're my grandparents. Grandpa's rather a cold and reserved person who only had eyes for his wife. So I asked Grandma what the secret to their successful relationship was. First, be grateful for your partner and not take love for granted. Second, know him better than you know yourself. Third, learn to forgive and apologize. Was that it? That wasn't exactly helpful. Our relationship was in a life or death situation and I needed to really do something. Right that moment, someone appeared in the kitchen and I couldn't believe it. My sister Mindy. I hadn't seen her in ages since she moved out with dad. I explained my fears to Mindy and she seemed to understand exactly why I was so concerned. Don't worry, sis. I'll stay here for a while so I can help you two overcome this curse and reignite your passion. First of all, as Mike's the biggest nerd I know, you need to appear more academic. Taking Mindy's advice, I gave myself this academia aesthetic, then went to see Mike at the amusement park. Oh look, there he is. Huh? Chloe? Um, you look different. Since when did you wear glasses? I've, um, always worn them, Mike. You must not have noticed. I stayed up late last night to watch a physics documentary. Now it's time to impress Mike with my knowledge about how water fountains actually work without electricity and run solely on gravity, how the fat in ice cream impacts the freezing point and I could taste the fat droplets, and how g-force and inertia were taken into account when mechanics made roller coasters for the thrill. But he didn't seem impressed at all. Chloe, you're not yourself today. Are you okay? I'm not okay. I've been wiggling my foot at you for ages, but you never noticed my undone laces. You didn't let me try your ice cream first, as you always do, and you didn't notice the effort I put into learning all this sciencey stuff for you. I'm sorry. I have this big project on my mind, and... Mike Jenkins, you've changed. The Mike I know and love was attentive and wouldn't let me walk around with untied shoes. You don't love me anymore. It all got too much for me, so I hurried off. Well, as quickly as I could with my shoelaces flailing. As soon as I got home, I phoned Mindy and told her everything. I was so lucky to have my big sis. OMG, he did what? It sounds like he just doesn't care about you anymore. Do you think? Um, maybe... Maybe he was just... No. If he cared, he would have come after you. Instead, he let you walk on dangerous sneakers. Mindy was right. Mike grew cold on me. This three-year curse was real. Now what should I do? There's only one thing. You'll have to test him. I've been sitting here for the past hour and Mike hasn't... Here he comes. This was Mindy's idea. Faking a car malfunction and calling Mike for help. Wow, you're so good. I'd still be stranded here alone without you. You could have asked someone else or called a garage. There wasn't even anything wrong with... It doesn't matter. But you're my boyfriend. Yes, your very busy boyfriend who lives in a different state. Anyway, I got a dash, and we'll have to take a rain check on next week. I have a lot on my plate. Then Mike left, leaving me more afraid of losing him than ever. As if he just left. His new environment changed him even more than I thought. Chloe, you have to infiltrate his space now before you lose him forever. 
So I went sneaking into Mike's dorm room and transformed it from nerdy to romantic chic. I hear footsteps. I better hide. I can't wait for him to see it. There's Mike, but huh? Who's with him? Oh, wow. Romantic much? Then the other person started taking their clothes off. I leaped out of the closet ready to tackle this man-stealer to the ground, but hold on a second. That's actually a man. Mike's roommate, Gus? Chloe, um, what are you doing here? I'm sorry. I just wanted to surprise you and, and ask you to come on a date with me today, tomorrow, whenever you're free. I told you I'm busy this week. I have an inspection tomorrow. So, you mean I'm bothering you? You don't need me anymore? Here, you can use my ID card and go with Mike to the inspection. Make it a hot date. That's very kind of you. Thank you so much. One way or another, my infiltration mission was a success. Hehe. <laughs> The next day, I came to this technical area with Mike and just stuck to him, not knowing what else I was supposed to do. Chloe, don't touch anything, okay? Mike, there you are. You have to come and see this. She dragged him off, and did she just smirk at me? Ugh, what an awful pick-me girl. She was obviously trying to separate us. No way was I gonna let her get away with that. I'd show them all that I deserve to be with him. While Liana's by herself walking around with a VR headset, I came to tell her to keep her hands off my boyfriend. Oh, there you are. Stay away from Mike. Little do you know that he has a girlfriend. You're just a clingy airhead that he's too polite to break up with. I'm the perfect girl for him, not you. I, I'm the most influential radio host on social media, and a third wheel like you call me an airhead? I'll make sure everyone knows what a horrible person you are. Really, so scary. As if I'll be worried about those pathetic gossip girls. How dare she? I pushed her, and suddenly, smash! Her headset broke into pieces on the floor. Oh no, Mike told me not to touch anything. What are you doing here? What happened? I'm so sorry, Chloe. I know that you're not okay with this whole thing, but I'm Mike's teammate, and we have to interact a lot. Nothing is going on between us. You're overreacting. Then she ran away in tears like she wasn't at fault. She's lying. I didn't say that. She said she wants. Chloe, enough. I'm too busy to worry about what chaos you're going to cause next. I think we should take a break. He took the ID pass off me, leaving me feeling like my whole world had crumbled. After crying an ocean of tears, I decided to make this right. I threw away my ego and texted him first. But before I hit send, I received a message from Mike saying he was sorry and we would have a trip to celebrate our three-year anniversary. This meant we weren't over and the curse wasn't true. Ooh, I needed to figure out which outfits to bring. I got everything packed and ready for our vacation of a lifetime. It was gonna be so romantic. But all of a sudden, Liana rushed to us and flung her arms around Mike. My pet dog, Nova, she's... She's passed away. I can't be alone right now. I'd rather die. That lying party pooper. Poor Mike didn't know what to say, so she just jumped in the back seat without my permission. No problem. The more, the merrier. I'll invite my sister to join us too. Mindy proved to be super useful, always interjecting whenever Liana approached Mike. But Liana just became more and more shameless. She glued herself to Mike and had the audacity to lie down next to him like I was invisible and even ate his ice cream. Worse still, my oblivious boyfriend didn't seem bothered at all. She's more cunning than I thought. You need to step up your game. It was such a beautiful night, but that third wheel Liana was buzzing around Mike like a mosquito. Then she started talking about physics stuff, and now he's so caught up in their conversation, I may as well have disappeared. Hmm, how could I make Liana see Mike loves me, not her? Well, I wasn't sure if he loves me anymore. Chloe, 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 you long for attention so badly you're willing to hurt yourself. She's already hurt because of you. This is her special three-year anniversary, and you invited yourself like how you've always wormed your way in. I bet you don't even have a dog. I diverted my gaze from a fake crying Liana to a confused looking Mike. Chloe, what are you trying to do? I'm worried you've lost your passion for me because we're at the three-year mark. We have different interests and I can't help but feel insecure about us. If you keep acting like this, well, I just don't know. I've been thinking about our future too, and I've decided it's time for us to... Oh, no, no, no. This isn't happening. I think I'm pregnant. We got back two days ago, and Mike still hadn't contacted me. This curse had caught up with me, and I lost him for good. I just wish I hadn't lied about the baby. Then maybe our breakup wouldn't have been so awkward. This called for retail therapy. 
I stepped outside and saw Mike with a massive suitcase. Chloe, I've abandoned the project and dropped out of college. I'm going to take care of you, both of you. Mike scurried around the house to make it pregnant woman friendly. He threw out all junk food, coffee, and even mayonnaise. Also, my high heels were packed away and Mozart was played everywhere in the house. Apparently, it'll make the baby a genius. We were going to have the perfect, happy family life. But when I went to my room to get my laptop for my next radio show, I couldn't find it anywhere. I asked Mike and he said, I packed it up with your high heels, makeup, books, and put them all in storage. You don't need any distractions. Just me, you, and the baby from now on. No more radio, studying, or friends. We can have a bunch of kids and grow old in this house. What? This wasn't what I wanted? Neither of us should have boring, unfulfilling lives or give up our dreams, right? I might not have my laptop, but I still had my phone. Welcome back! Today's topic is my friend Sally, again. She lied about being pregnant so her boyfriend wouldn't leave her. Should she keep lying or tell the truth? This time, Twinkle Star appeared again. I know she's always been a brave girl who isn't afraid of admitting her own faults and correcting her mistakes. She should tell her boyfriend the truth and explain how much she loves him. Hmm, sounds oddly specific. Who's this person? Actually, Bubble Buzz, we know each other. Before I could ask him anything else, Twinkle Star went offline. Whoever that was, I think they were right. So I went downstairs to talk to Mike, only he wasn't there. Instead, Mindy jumped out of nowhere holding a pregnancy test and a bottle of Coke. I just need to dunk this in here and the plus sign will show up clear as day in case Mike has any doubt about the baby. No need to, I'm going to tell him the truth. Are you sure about that? What if Mike gets mad? I stopped and thought about it. No, as scary as it was, I couldn't do this anymore. I was looking out for Mike by telling him the truth. Where was he? He had to be around here somewhere. Liana, why was she here with Mike? Mike, I'm sorry, but Chloe's not pregnant. She admitted on her radio show. You deserve to be with someone who wouldn't make up such awful lies. Someone like me. Oh no, I lost the chance to tell him firsthand. Now Mike would never talk to me ever again. Chloe, wait. I couldn't turn around and bear the disappointment in his eyes. I couldn't blame anyone, any third wheel or curse for destroying my relationship. Hey there, I know this is an unscheduled show, but I wanted to talk to y'all. That girl I talked about yesterday, Sally, well, she's me. I faked being pregnant to keep my relationship, but my boyfriend hates me now. I was so terrified of this three-year curse that I became this jealous monster. Mike even dropped out because of me. I'm so selfish for expecting him to spend every minute of his day with me. He needs his own life too. We both do. It's the time apart that makes our time together more exciting and our love more passionate. Now we've broken up and it's all my fault. I stopped to catch my breath. Who told you I wanted to break up? Didn't, didn't you say you thought carefully about our future and made a decision? You know what, after all your silly shenanigans, including faking your pregnancy, I'm still madly in love with you. So the decision I made was, Chloe Ruth Evanson, you're crazy, kooky, and one of a kind. I can't stand the thought of not having you in my life. Will you marry me? Yes? But Mike, after our engagement, you should continue your studies, projects, internship and whatnot. You don't have to stay by my side all the time. What? I thought you'd like that. We can be together all day and make enough babies for a soccer team, right? Relax, I'm just kidding. I knew you were lying about the baby all along. Your grandpa told me. Turns out, Twinkle Star was none other than my grandpa, who saw that I needed some guidance and tried to give me objective advice. Mike only went along with the lie to tease me. Hmm, who knew my nerdy boyfriend could be so playful? Or should I say, my fiancé? I stood in front of this shabby cottage, trying to calm myself, and went inside. One step in, and the door snapped shut. I freaked out and banged on the door. Let me out! Let me out! But only ghastly laughter resounded. Just then, I could feel someone coming close to me. I turned around and was terrified by what I saw. Hey, Clover here, the one that just got scared witless. I know, so embarrassing. Let me tell you how I got myself into that situation in the first place. But before I do, please like and subscribe.
I used to have everything. I come from a family of esteemed cardiologists who's made numerous contributions to the medical field. And as the next generation of Howards, I took immense pride in continuing their legacy, which was getting a Harvard medical degree and becoming a doctor. That's why I always made sure my academic record was top notch. I went to this elite private school, aced every subject, and became the class president. Finally, winter dance prepping's finished, so I could sit back and watch this magical night come to life. Suddenly, my phone got a notice. It's an article about my parents, and how they were involved in an operation that cost a patient's life. No way was this real! But when I looked up, everyone was giving me bombastic side eyes. Jeez, I should go to my parents now. I had to ask as soon as I found them. Mom? Dad? What the press is saying isn't true, right? Honey, listen. When the patient was brought in, there wasn't much we could do for her. It was too late. Turns out, she's from the Albert family, a very powerful family in the country. They didn't take it too well, especially her son. He blamed my parents for his mom's passing, meaning this media crisis was his doing. My parents explained to him many times, but to no avail. Now he even took legal actions against them. They had no choice but to show up in court. The incident quickly became talk of the town. Everyone was throwing jibes at us. Gosh, all these turmoils were driving me insane. Clover, can you solve this equation? Clover? Clover! Stop! The whole room turned silent for a second and stared at me like I was some freak. I picked up my books and stormed right out of class. But still, whispers followed me everywhere I went. There was no other place for me to be, so I just ran home and wept tears of frustration. My parents came in all worried for me. They thought maybe it's best if I stayed at my aunt's place. But mom, dad, I can't just leave you here. You're not leaving us. It's just that things are messy right now, and we don't want you to be affected. Besides, it's just temporary. Once the lawsuit's over, we'll reunite. Promise? Promise. When I arrived at my aunt's house, she seemed annoyed. Your room's in the attic. You're just here temporarily, so do not make any fuss. It's bad enough your parents got slapped with a lawsuit. Just then, I got a text. Mom's checking in on me. I shouldn't worry her, right? But honestly, I'm not sure how I'd survive this place. First day of school, I had to ride this pile of junk here. Cycling alone made me sweat like a dog. Just then, a boy passed by and yelled at me. Hey, you got a fat side! Excuse me? I said, you got a flat tire! Oh, that explains a lot. He helped me fix it. A few minutes later, the bike was good to go. The guy's Percy. He went to the same school as me, and today was also his first day. So, we arrived at school together. As soon as we entered the hallway, everyone stared at us. Suddenly, two girls came dragging me aside. Who are you? Why are you with Percy? You're not his girlfriend, right? Jeez, I met him 10 minutes ago. I don't even know who he is. OMG, you live under a rock or something? He's Percy Albert, the sole heir of the powerful Albert family. That name, could it be a coincidence? The son that insisted on suing my parents went to the same school as me? Hold on, Clover. This could be your chance to manipulate him into withdrawing the lawsuit. And boom, things could go back the way they were. Hmm, let's see. I could make him fall for me. People would do anything for love, right? Lucky me, Percy and I were in the same biology class where we worked in pairs. The two girls from before, Holly and Jody, started fighting to be his lab partner. Meanwhile, he straight up asked me. Well, well, not a finger lifted and the prey was already in my trap. That night, I went on his social media account and found out he often golfed at Rolling Greens. I could be a caddy, just had to apply for the position. I got accepted in no time and quickly got used to the job. Oh, and I just happened to go through Percy's golfing schedule and totally did not plan this chance encounter. I parked the golf cart ready to seduce my Ken doll, but somehow standing in front of me was Holly and Jody. What took you so long? Do you know how hot it gets? At least I still got a chance with him on the field. But as soon as these blondies caught sight of Percy, they flew towards him like moths to a flame. So I was left to carry these human-sized bags. Ew, she's stinking with sweat. Social distance, please. Stop, you're being mean. Clover, let me help you with that. Thanks, you came to my rescue again. No worries. Say, I didn't know you worked here. Yeah, I'm pretty good at golf, by the way. For your 50-yard shot, you might want to use this club. Center yourself and give it a good backswing. Percy took my advice and caught a strike. Already? Hey, how would you like to be my personal caddy? Hmm, I don't know. Come on, help a guy out. Okay, on one condition. 
When the time's right, I'll use this card. When exactly? I'm so intrigued right now. <laughs> you just wait. From then on, we always stick together golfing and hiding from Holly and Jody. Hey, are you free this Saturday? Since you helped me out and everything, I, um, want to repay you. Yes, my plan worked. I was so happy I could jump up and scream. But that only happened inside my head. I still gotta play it cool. Only if it's a date. Saturday came and we took a trolley downtown to watch the streets in the fall. Look at how pretty the golden leaves are. We then stopped at this carnival. And I gotta admit, Percy seemed genuinely sweet. He protected me from the rushing crowd, held my hand when I was petrified on the Ferris wheel. His caring gestures had my heart racing a bit, and also wondered, how could this guy resent my parents that much? As the last ray of sunlight disappeared, the carnival lit up, and Percy's eyes suddenly looked so dreamy. Snap out of it, Clover! You're supposed to make him fall for you, not the other way around! The ride ended and I immediately went to get some refreshments to calm myself down. But holy cow, I couldn't find my wallet anywhere! What do I do? Excuse me, I'll pay for her. How much is it? Thank you so much! I owe you big time. No worries. Please, at least give me your contact, I'll pay you back! Is that your way of asking me out? No, I… well, if your boyfriend doesn't mind, give me your hand. Meet me at Caribou's Coffee Shop, 8am Sunday. Here, treat. After the date, I was sure Percy had feelings for me. I just needed to make him say it. Then I spotted Dumb and Dumber sneaking around my locker. They're trying to fake a note from Percy to me. Tell her to meet Percy at the haunted house in the woods. Then we'll trap her inside. Hmm, lame pranks. But I suppose I can go along with them and get Percy all worked up. Nice! And of course, gotta let Percy know where I was heading. I know this was a stupid prank, but the eerie vibe still gave me the creep. I stood in front of this shabby cottage, <sighs> trying to calm myself, and went inside. One step in, and the door snapped shut. I freaked out, banged on the door. Let me out! Let me out! But no use! Only the sound of ghastly laughter resounded. Just then, I could sense someone coming closer to me. I turned around, so terrified, blood drained from my face. Oh my ghost! Stop shrieking, stupid child. I'm not a ghost yet. He he's a real person? Clover, don't worry. It's just my grandpa. Grandpa? What's your grandpa doing here? Um, this is my house. So, this used to be his granddad's house when he was young. Since Percy's mom passed away, grandpa's health deteriorated. No one in the family cared about him except Percy, as they were all deep in sorrow and hatred. Percy mourned for his mom too, but had to stay strong for his grandpa. So, he brought him back to this peaceful house, hoping grandpa would feel better. At that moment, I felt bad for what happened to Percy and his family. Losing their loved one must have been so painful. I suddenly understood his motive now, and he badly needed this hug. Clover, I think I'm in love with you. I gushed over his words. Looking in his eyes, I knew it was real, and what I felt for him was also genuine. We could work this out, right? I'd tell him the truth and my side of the story. He'd understand. Percy, I love- But one phone call from mom changed everything. Honey, we lost the case. Their son has taken everything away from us. Our property, our legacy. Your dad was so distressed, he almost had a heart attack. Hearing mom's words, tears started streaming down my cheeks. What was I thinking? How could we possibly be together? After that, I avoided Percy completely. I also decided to move out of my aunt's and find a new place. And guess who hooked me up? It's Hunter, the guy I met at the carnival. We did end up going on a coffee date. He seemed cool and knew his way around town. So I asked if he knew a place that me and my parents could stay, as they'd move here soon. Look at this! Pretty cozy, huh? Hunter was nice enough to help me move. Just then, there's a knock on the door. I opened it to see Percy. He got so worried and went looking for me. But once he saw Hunter, he was dumbstruck. Didn't expect you'd find this place so fast, brother. Wait, you two are brothers? Sadly, yes. And we're supposed to mourn for our late mother. Yet here he is, playing lovebirds. With you. If losing mom isn't that big of a deal for him, let's see how he'd like losing you. Don't you dare touch her. Or what? You'll punch me? You Alberts are the worst. Was ruining my family not enough? What are you talking about? I'm Clover Howard. My parents were the doctors who tried to save your mom, but got punished for that. I was so stupid to think I could convince you to drop the lawsuit. My family's in shambles now. Happy? I, I didn't know. Get out. Never come near me again. 
Percy had to haul off with a regretful look. A few days later, my parents arrived. I told them everything that had happened, but they said the son who pressed charges was actually Hunter, not Percy. Turns out, their family situation was complicated. Hunter went missing when he was seven, and not until recently did he return, but then his mom unexpectedly passed away. He must have been so miserable that he had to take it out on us. Percy, on the other hand, was really thoughtful and understanding. He did all he could to stop his brother, and I just put it all on him. I had to go fix this. When I got to the cottage, Percy was trying to stop Hunter from messing with my family again. You don't get a say in this. You grew up with mom's love while I got nothing, and you couldn't even pay her proper respect. We can mourn her in different ways. Mom wouldn't want us to dive deep in hatred. <laughs> mom wouldn't want us to befriend people who couldn't save her. And you fell in love with their daughter? Traitor! Hunter was about to punch Percy. I had to stop him. Quick! Clover? You should leave now. No, I came here to apologize to you. We gotta work things out. Then let's have a little chit-chat, shall we? I was so close to having a taste of Hunter's fist when Percy came between us and took the full blow. We both ended up on the floor. And when we looked up, their grandpa was already there and witnessed everything. Percy, Hunter, stop fighting. His breath suddenly fell short. His knees were trembling. I immediately called my parents for help, but Hunter snatched my wrist. What are you doing? Call your parents here to mock us? No, I'm just trying to help. He then was on the phone with their family doctor, but she couldn't come because there was a storm blocking all roads. Please, can't you see Grandpa's in pain? You shut it. I'd never get help from those lousy doctors again. Hunter, I'm sorry for what happened. I really am. But don't let your hatred endanger your granddad. I could see Hunter's conflict, but with every second passed, their grandpa became pale. His breath got weaker. He needed to decide now. P please save him. I immediately called my parents. Minutes later, they arrived and gave him first aid right away. Luckily, Grandpa reacted positively to the medication and gradually recovered. Hunter then broke down in tears. I can't believe I almost put Grandpa in danger just because of my blind hatred. And you didn't think twice about helping. I, I'm so, so sorry, everyone. Clover, Mr. and Mrs. Howard, I promise I'll make this right. The following day, Hunter arranged a press conference admitting he was wrong to bring my parents to court. Thus, he'd take full responsibility in fixing his mistakes, including clearing our reputation and compensating us financially. When it's settled, we started a new life here. My parents bought a house, founded this hospital to help people, while I got to continue my dream of becoming a doctor. Harvard meds, here I come! Oops, almost forgot. Of course, Percy and I got together. You didn't think we went through all that, and I never admitted my feelings, did you? I'd been holding it back for what felt like forever. Now, I get to have my happy ending. You are watching the incredible Barry's Blue. I'm Sonya, the super talented lead vocalist. And that guy over there rocking the guitar is Eric, my boyfriend. He's also our composer and backing vocalist. Yep, my man's good at everything, just like me. Actually, he's the one who discovered my vocal talent and helped me on my road to fame. Our debut album exploded onto the charts. And the rest is history. Eric asked me to be his girlfriend right on stage after our set. I don't know who was more excited, me or my adoring fans. Everything was perfect. And then our next album flopped. I guess all that pressure had interrupted Eric's writing process. I tried to send him positive energy. We had a big show coming up to debut our new single and start our comeback. Who knows when the sun will rise again, right? But during our performance, as Eric stepped back to give me the spotlight, I stepped forward and suddenly slipped and fell. S Sonia, your nose, it's crooked. I was rushed into surgery, but my nose looked like a lightning bolt. I can't look like this. I must be beautiful. You'll always be the cutest girl to me. No need to worry. We can still fix it. But right after that, the photo of my busted nose hit the headlines. I got ridiculed for praising natural beauty and then getting plastic surgery. What vultures! I had to upload the video of me slipping to end these rumors, but they claimed I did it on purpose to get attention. What on earth? We thought all that drama was finally over, but no. Right when my nose healed, my chubby pre-puberty secondary school photo appeared all over the internet, which sparked rumors about me having my whole body reconstructed. Some anonymous posts even made up that I was hot-tempered and snooty to band crew and waiting staff. 
I mean, maybe I could be a bit abrupt, but I was famous, so I was allowed to get what I wanted. Then, Let's Cancel Sonia began to circulate. Do these tragic people have nothing better to do than gossip about me? But my fans took notice, and a load of our tour tickets got cancelled. My manager freaked out and made me go on leave until the rumors died down. How ridiculous! Worse still, they were actually going to try to replace me? The beautiful, one-of-a-kind lead vocalist? How dare they do this to me? I am the band! Hang in there, babe. I promise I'll find a way to get you back. Obviously, my photos didn't leak themselves. Some jerk did this, and it's now my life mission to track them down and make them pay. Okay, so from my internet searching, I traced the original rumor to this group of my anti-fans. Can you believe they actually met up at this cafe once a month just to badmouth me? They even had a schedule. How ridiculous! What had I ever done to them? Disguising myself, I showed up to find out more clues. Hmm, inside were those terrible leaked pictures of me. Jeez, these people clearly had way too much time on their hands. Wait, this guy looks familiar. Is he Owen, my high school crush? He was my senior in the music club and a super talented singer, guitarist, and composer. But how come he's my anti-fan? I never even spoke to him. The group buzzed about how pretentious I am. They even said Eric and I were fake dating just to cover up the news about our latest album flop. Ahem. Obviously, our love is real. I never tire of hearing trash talking about that Eric guy's songs, but it's closing time. If you posted about Barry's Blue, please claim your money from the counter before leaving. What? Owen actually paid them to slander my band? Why was he so intent on ruining my career? Did he have a personal vendetta against me? I just had to find my own way to figure all this out. Making myself one of them should do it. I immediately called to apply for the job. And I got it. Showtime. It's important to look the part. So I dressed up as this innocent looking girl for my first shift. Thanks to the magic of makeup, even I could hardly recognize myself. Call me Summer from now on. After the introduction, Owen immediately gave me tons of work. I had to do the heavy lifting and stinky, dirty work. I was a pampered star, not a grunt. Ugh, he's such an exploitive boss. I must have been crazy to have ever crushed on him. In the evening, the anti-fan group showed up again, followed by a familiar face. It's Rena, Owen's little sister. Back in high school, she was quite arrogant. It seemed like nothing had changed. Did you know that Sonia was such a weirdo in high school? Now that she's famous, she's acting like she's above everyone else. Stop right there, carrot hair. What's your name? Um, I'm Summer. So, Summer, here we've got a special requirement for every newbie. You have to pass the anti-fan test. Tell us, what do you think's the most irritating thing about Sonia? Ugh, now I have to defame myself? Actually, I was Sonia's childhood friend. Well, just a neighbor. She was the worst kid in the neighborhood. What did Sonia look like when she was young? And how was her personality? She was chubby and cruel to other kids. She threw bugs at them and never shared her toys. Take notes, guys. Remember to cite the source as Sonia's close neighbor. You can get some bonus, too, for contributing useful information like this. Was Rena also involved in this, along with her brother? When Rena left, the other anti-fans, Caleb, Violet, and June, still didn't leave, but turned to the stage and started tuning the instruments? What? They'd composed a whole song to mock me, not only about my surgery rumors, but also that I was a vain, hot-tempered, competitive, talentless, disrespectful, and never used my abundant money to help others. Their music was good, but the insolence killed their skills. I'm curious, why do people hate Sonya that much? She's rude and her music sucks. Yeah, her natural voice is good, but it doesn't have any emotions. She probably doesn't know anything about love and doesn't have any friends either. Those comments from the anti-fans got me thinking. I suppose I do find it hard to open up to people, and I can be a bit hot-headed sometimes, but am I really that unlikable? Ugh, not the nose again, please! Huh? Owen? First you break the cups, now you're wasting sugar. Sugar? Seriously? Aren't you even going to ask if I'm hurt? If I leave here with just a scratch, this place will be finished, you know. This place was fine until you showed up. At least, Summer, you should learn how to apologize and thank. Suddenly, the anti-fan's words echoed in my head. As Summer, Owen still saw how much of a diva I was. That means, as Sonya, I must have been so despicable. 
Um, I'm sorry. I should have thanked you for helping me. Hmm, that's okay. I'm glad you're not hurt. Don't forget Rena's reward at the counter. Take it before you go. Why do you have to pay others to badmouth Sonya? I'm only going along with all this for my sister, but it brings more customers in, so whatever. So the person behind this is Rena? I don't think so. Someone must be pulling her strings. But who? I don't know. Why are you so concerned, Summer? I was just curious. <laughs> I used to think badly about Owen, but beneath his cold front, he's kind of sweet and caring. Just like years ago. I was trying to escape the rain and bumped into him. He saved me from falling. Didn't care how sweaty I was and even gave me his umbrella. But in front of my crush, I was too shy and embarrassed to say anything and hurried off. Since then, I didn't feel so uncomfortable hearing the anti-fans slate me and our band's decline. It was almost all true anyway. At least this way, I could learn from my past mistakes and become a way better person. Flowers grow in the strangest of places, right? Yeah, these anti-fans actually became my friends. Playing with them was way more fun than with the berries somehow. Okay guys, you need to share your music with the world. So, I signed up our budding band for a local music competition. Well, what? But we're not professionals. Do you really think we can win? Who cares? I always wanted to perform on a big stage. But what are we gonna play? Use one of my songs if you want. I hear the payout is pretty good. Ooh, I love your songs! We practiced together every night, and everyone was so focused on this, they didn't post bad rumors about me anymore. Owen is truly a genius. Listening to him playing his intros always gave me goosebumps. And so, the image of a cute, talented Owen reappeared in my mind. Oh no. Wake up, Sonya. You already have a boyfriend. Eric? Speaking of Eric, he's been ignoring all of my calls. I get it. He's busy rehearsing for the show. But didn't he promise to find a way to bring me back? Oh, I see. You're too busy playing bands to post anything. We have a show this weekend. You started this, didn't you, Summer? I knew you were trouble from the beginning. Get out of here. I'm on her side. Are you going to kick me out too? Don't you see I'm doing this for you? Did you forget that Eric stole your songs and used them for his debut album? Rena, don't you think I already know what you're up to? You and that Eric guy are seeing each other, right? Doesn't he want you to spread rumors so he can replace Sonya, his current girlfriend? He says if I succeed, her place in the band will be mine. An affair is one thing, but he can't help you shine with that tuneless music. That's why I need your songs! Owen, just give me a few and everything will go smoothly! At that moment, it all became clear. The only album that made a name for the Berries was actually stolen. And worse still, the person behind my plummeting career was my own boyfriend. That jerk Eric craves fame and would never let himself get caught up in a love triangle scandal. You know how important public opinion is to him. He's using you and as soon as you give him what he wants, he'll drop you without a thought. I'm not that easily replaceable. What do you mean, Summer? I'm sorry for lying about who I really am, but not everything is fake. I wish you could feel it. Pass my words to him. I'm out. And you, Rena? That jerk doesn't deserve any of our love or trust. Even if I didn't want to go back to being the famous Sonya, I couldn't continue to be the carefree Summer either. I didn't realize they were there. They must have heard everything. You're Sonya? Not Summer? All this time? You lied to us! I'm sorry. I didn't mean to hurt you or trick you. Your words made me want to change myself for the better. And your music taught and inspired me a lot. Caleb, Violet, June, I just want to be friends with you. Who wants to be your friend, you liar? I may have found out the truth about myself and Eric, but now I've lost my career, my friends, my boss, everything. I'd made such a mess of everything, and I didn't know how to fix it. I don't deserve to be Sonya, or even Summer. It must be a delivery guy. I barely had the energy to get up and open the door. Standing in front of me was... Owen? Did he come all the way here just to see me? Some... Sonya. I've been thinking a lot about your band and Eric, and I realized that this isn't your fault. You can't let Eric win. You're too talented for that. If you show everyone your true self, I just know they'll love you. Actually, there's one thing I want to confess to you. I used to have a crush on you in high school, but you probably didn't even know I existed. Really? That's so dumb. What do you mean? Actually, at that time I liked you too. You were so cute and shy with that beautiful voice. But when I came closer to talk to you, you just ran away. If I had been more confident and braver, maybe we could have become something different. What about now? I mean, do you still want to sing my song? It'll be an honor. 
Your song is always special. Owen pulled me to the competition and tenderly strapped the bass on for me. Going out there without the rest of the band seemed terrifying, but we couldn't give up. Owen was about to lead me on stage when Rena rushed over to us and grabbed my arm. Sonia, I messed up. It's true that Eric was using me, and I had been so blind to trust him that much. I've corrected the misinformation about you. I was hugging her when the rest of the anti-fans appeared. I apologized to them how I was now a better version of myself because of them. Turns out we really like Summer, so we forgive you. Now we're ready to rock the night. You can't sing with them, Sonia. That song is supposed to be the theme song in our next album. Eric, it's Owen's song, not yours. And didn't Rena tell you that I no longer give a damn about your band? I did. Seems he wasn't listening. We've published your dirty plan all over the forums, so everyone can see what a jerk you are. No, you have to come with me. Tell them you made it all up. Leave her alone. I won't let you take anything from me again. My song or my girl. She's our friend now, so excuse us. We need to get on stage and perform our song. I can't believe I'm back on stage again. Only this time, it's so much better. My bandmates are awesome. The song is amazing, and the crowd is going wild. I saw Eric shamefully disappear through the crowd. Tough luck. That's what being a big slimy liar gets you. Toward the end of the song, Owen pulled me close to him and the crowd went silent. All I could hear was the beating of my heart when he gave me the best kiss ever. The bell had already rung, but here I was, still stuck in chemistry class. Mr. Evans won't stop droning on about the big test coming up. Abigail! Abigail! You do know what a bond is, right? That's easy. My dad goes on about them all the time. U.S. treasuries, Japan bonds... They are financial bonds. We're talking about chemical bonds, for Christ's sake. Close enough. Don't you think I deserve a grade increase? Enough. Go and meet your homeroom now. This is unacceptable. Jeez, his bad mood must have been contagious for adults, as Miss Garcia was also in a foul mood. So, Abigail, I will organize a meeting with your dad. M my dad? No, no, he'll go mad and take away my credit card. This seriously cannot go on anymore. Your grades are in a downward spiral. I promise, I'll actually study this time. Please, let me prove it by acing my next test. Your next test? Let's see. That appears to be your chemistry final in two weeks' time. That's perfect! I need time to process all the knowledge I've been learning anyway. And, phew, crisis averted. Now, where's Norma? I need some retail therapy with my bestie. Hmm, so I have two weeks to work this out. I mean, you can probably cram in quite a bit within that time. No, Norma! I have to figure out what I need to buy before my dad locks the card! Right then, a nearby waiter suddenly tripped and spilled orange juice onto... Norma and her newly brought Chanel bag! Oh no! But to my surprise, she just smiled and dismissed the waiter. What was that, Norma? What's got into you? Love, I guess? It's still early days, but I'm in love, Abby. <sighs> Isn't the world so dreamy and beautiful? Hmm, you are... kinda happy? Hold up, Mrs. Garcia is single. If I found someone special, then she'd be too distracted to call in my dad for the meeting. Yeah, I guess. Or, you know, you could actually study. Don't be ridiculous. <sighs> Mr. Evans is single too. Two birds, one stone. <laughs> so the next morning, I joined Mr. Evans' chemistry club to spy on him. Wanna hear a joke? What do you think zero says to eight? Nice belt! <laughs> Hey girl, can I be the photon to your electron and take you to an excited state? Please, somebody save me already! Yo, Callum, you're late to the party. We're having a blast over here. Are you coming home with me or Mrs. Garcia today? Miss Garcia? Hi, Hank. My mom's staying late at school today, so... This Callum guy is Miss Garcia's son? I sure came to the right place. Mr. Evanson gave some boring lecture about states of matter. After drawing a whole maze of weird symbols and stuff on the board, he asked if anyone had any questions. Here comes my chance. Oh, good. Curiosity is the gateway to knowledge. Go ahead, Abigail. I was wondering if you like tea or coffee? Oh, and also, are you more of a dog or cat person? Can you please pay attention to the lesson? Callum, as a top student, I think you can help her. Of course you will, Mr. Evans. Poor guy, he's totally oblivious that he's been chosen for my master plan. Who made him Miss Garcia's son in the first place? So, Callum, right? You know, your mom's actually my homeroom teacher. Yeah, I got that figured out long ago. Wait, what? You already knew about me? How can I not? 
the lowest scoring student in every class, you're my mom's favorite dinner topic. That's why I'm here, studying to change your mom's dinner topic. Could you help me with that? Nope. I don't know what you're up to, but keep me out of it. No way I was letting this plan fail. So I decided to follow Callum to the library after school to learn more about Miss Garcia. Oops, what a coincidence. Didn't expect you to be here. Thought you'd be studying with your mom 24-7. We're just normal people who do other things apart from studying. You know, reading, watching movies, talking. I guess you and your mom only read specialized books. <laughs> Quite the opposite, actually. We both enjoy Victor Hugo. What about you? Since when were you suddenly interested in chemistry? M me? Why, why not? I've always had the biggest passion for chemistry. The way all the substances interact with each other is mind-blowing. Chemical bonds, you know? If you're that interested, then yeah, I'll make you a master of chemistry. But first, you may want to try reading your book the correct way. Did he just say he'd help me with chemistry? Hmm, why does my gut instinct tell me trouble is on the way? I came home with Callan's precious piece of information about his mom and forged the cheesiest love letter, well, on behalf of Mr. Evans, of course, and made sure to hand deliver it. Who knew someone as strict as Miss Garcia had a soft spot for Victor Hugo romance novels? <laughs> From my hiding spot, I saw Callum open the door and get the letter. Okay, first bird down. The next morning, I was excited to peek into the teacher's room to check on Miss Garcia. But why is the principal here? And in his hand is the love letter. Ye who suffer because ye love, love yet more. To die of love is to live in it. From David. David Evans? <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Brownies, that's actually my, uh, literature assignment. Wrong address. <laughs> How in the caramel fudge did this letter end up here? Callum obviously got the letter. I decided to sneak the letter directly into Miss Garcia's bag afterward. Better safe than sorry. In the following days, I needed to send Mr. Evans the other love letter too. Only, Callum was a little too... determined to turn me into a chemistry master. He made sure I got the notes imprinted in my brain, questioned me on the topics like an FBI agent interrogating a hard case, and even had his eyes fixed on me every time I carried out the experiments. I got no time left for my plan. You know what I've come to find out? You're actually not that bad at studying. Just need some more attention. As if I care. When will he leave me alone so I can take the other bird down? Right then, Mr. Evans suddenly called Callum to the discussion room next door. Gotta go. You can finish the oxidation. Remember to measure carefully and not take your eyes off of it for a second. Don't sweat it. I've got this. As soon as he left, I sneaked into Mr. Evans' room and put the letter in his bag. But when I was about to leave, something caught my eye. A picture of young Mr. Evans. Yikes, did too much studying and no loving make his hair leave him for good? Hmm, he has a lot of books in here. Some of them are by... Victor Hugo! Ha! Huh. Seems Mr. Evan and Miss Garcia are made for each other. Oh, sugar, the experiment! I ran back to the lab and poured all the substances in, but it was... weird. What did I tell you? All the time spent on this experiment, just to see it burn! Oh, wait, what is this purplish substance? Mauve! We've accidentally created Moav instead! You're so brilliant, Abby! Didn't really know what was going on, but are those my cheeks I can feel blushing? What's gotten into me? Didn't know you two are progressing that fast. Maybe keep it down a notch in public. Seeing Hank made us both turn cherry red and jolt apart. It was just a joke, but somehow my heart was flipping. After the incident, Callum didn't seem so annoyed with me anymore. Instead, he was kind of caring. He would patiently explain things I didn't understand and clean up after our experiments. Talk about having great chemistry together. Literally. The two-week mark soon arrived, but strangely all the questions were not hard at all. I know all of the answers. They're all on topics I covered with Callum. Later that day, I was walking when Callum zoomed over to me. Mr. Evans said you passed the test. I knew you could do it. Abby, if you'd like, do you want to go out for a movie? Abby, Abby, shocking news! I just saw Mr. Evans and Miss Garcia holding hands in the school garden. Things are progressing! Norma and I both turned into excited dolphins when Callum's happy expression fell. What are you talking about? My mom with whom? Mr. Evans, you should thank Abby. It was her plan to get your mom a new boyfriend. The plan? Is that what you call it? Passion for chemistry? So what? It worked, didn't it? This isn't gonna happen. No way! What's your problem? Why don't you want your mom to be happy? Talk about selfish. Callum couldn't answer and huffed off. He's been ignoring me ever since. And me? I decided to find a new lab partner. 
Well, if Hank would quit getting in the way, why did he always poke his nose in? I gave Hank a dirty look, but he just pushed Callum toward me. You two are welcome. Ugh, what gives? Callum couldn't even meet my eye. I felt kind of bad for Callum. I guess no one wants to see their parent dating their chemistry teacher, right? Why bother anyway? I should be happy because the plan has worked out. What's up with Callum? Why is he acting as if someone burglarized his house or something? Actually, Callum's dad walked out on them a couple of years back. Since then, he swore to never let anyone hurt his mom again. That's why he's so against your matchmaking plan. That explains a lot, but wait, how did you know about the matchmaking plan? Hank started to sweat bullets while Norma constantly winked at him. Hey, are you guys hiding something from me? Don't tell me- No, no, we're not dating. We- we're- You said it yourself, idiot! Hmm, that makes sense. The next morning, Miss Garcia suddenly got sick, and this Miss Flowers came in to cover. Different from our strict homeroom, Miss Flowers didn't teach much and seems pretty chill with whatever we do in class. Great, huh? Yeah, it would be if she didn't keep on flirting with Mr. Evans. Mr. Evans didn't look comfortable with Miss Flowers at all. She was obviously trying so hard to win him over. Poor Miss Garcia. She looked so happy with Mr. Evans before. My master plan can't have been for nothing. I gotta do something. So I handcrafted a reminder love letter on behalf of Miss Garcia again. That was sure to make Mr. Evans' heart give off butterfly flutters. But I was sneaking it onto his desk when Miss Flowers appeared. Abigail, what are you doing? Why are you doing this? Mr. Evans is my dream man, not hers. No, he's not. He and Miss Garcia are obviously made for each other. Duh. I demand that you take that back at once. He's my heart's desire. Mine. No, he's not. He goes all gooey-eyed at Miss Garcia, not you. This is unacceptable. Detention. That's not fair, Miss Flowers. You can't punish her over nothing. You. Garcia's son, right? Wanna play hero saves beauty? Detention for both of you, now. Miss Flowers? More like Miss Tyrant. What kind of a teacher made students clean the windows for detention? Ugh, these stupid windows. Breaking my back already. And Callum being all frosty the snowman with me is not helping. You've brought all of this on yourself. What? If you hadn't have given the love letter to the principal in the first place, Mr. Evans and your mom would be official already. My mom and I are fine by ourselves. Who's being stubborn now? Hank already told me everything. I understand you're upset, but have you ever thought about what your mom wants? She sure looked happy with Mr. Evans. Callum didn't say anything, but I could tell from his glazed eyes that he was thinking hard about this. When Callum and I finally got out of detention, Hank and Norma rushed in. We just heard that Miss Garcia has food poisoning. She's fine now, but Miss Flowers will probably cover for another week. Why do I feel like Miss Flowers has something to do with this? She visited my mom yesterday and gave her a casserole. That's it! Miss Flowers must have poisoned Miss Garcia so she could replace her. But this is getting crazy. Hmm, what can we do? How about we publicize all the love letters online so the whole school knows about Miss Garcia and Mr. Evans? I mean, if that's okay with you? Callum didn't say anything and just nodded. We immediately rushed to the IT room, but the computer's locked. Let me handle it. I know the password. With Callum's help, we posted on the school forum. And guess what? Everyone's smitten with Miss Garcia and Mr. Evans' love story. Cute, huh? We then left to visit Miss Garcia, but Miss Flowers appeared in front of us. What do you all think you're doing? Making a fuss on the school forum? I bravely stepped up to face her. You've seen it. Mr. Evans and Miss Garcia belong together. You should just give up on him already. Is that so? You know what? Mr. Evans actually wanted me to meet him for a private talk tonight. And as for your homeroom teacher, guess what? That position will be mine full time. <laughs> I'm afraid you've got it all mixed up, Miss Flowers. It's Mr. Evans, followed by Miss Garcia. We ask you to come to talk about Miss Garcia's food poisoning. That's right. Earlier today, you visited me, asking me if I was ready to come back to class tomorrow. You were very kind and even brought me homemade food. Little did I know that this was a deliberate attempt for you to make me sick. Luckily, Mr. Evans dropped by just in time to get me to the ER. And now you're talking about taking my place? No way! But... But the students clearly love me more anyway. They hate you because you always make them study. Just then, everyone started booing her. Miss Garcia is strict, but at least she's serious with teaching and always makes sure we study. You don't teach us anything. That's right. And we all know about Miss Garcia and Mr. Evans already. You're just being a third wheel. No, no, no. This can't be true. David, tell these kids that our love is as bright as the sun and, and that we're soulmates. I know you love me. Tell them. David, tell them you love me. Tell them! 
Unfortunately, my heart has always belonged to Miss Garcia. I was nervous about sharing my feelings with her, but fate brought us together, and now I couldn't be happier. Miss Flower's whole expression wilted. Ha! She burst into hysterical tears and ran off. Mom, are you okay? I'm sorry I wasn't there. I'm fine, Callum. Please don't worry. Um, thanks for looking out for my mom. Please, can you take her home for me? Mr. Evans nodded, then took Miss Garcia away. When there were only four of us, actually, two of us left, Callum turned to me. You were right. It was so silly of me trying to stop people from falling in love. Because when you fall for someone, you can't help it. What do you mean? I mean, I think I've fallen for you. My phone beeped with a new message. Emma, I've got something to do nearby, so let's meet there. See ya. It was from Tony, my childhood friend from the orphanage back in Missouri. Yep, that's right. I ended up in an orphanage after my mom passed away when I was only four years old. But things were even worse for Tony and him. They'd been left outside the orphanage door without anyone even knowing who their parents were. And now, here I am, on my way to visit his grave, as today's his death anniversary. <sighs> Time flies. I can hardly believe it's been ten years already. I picked up some flowers, then drove to the cemetery. Tony was already there waiting for me. I smiled and waved, but my heart felt heavy. Back when we were 14, we'd been joined at the hip, Tony, Thomas, and me. I had a secret crush on Thomas, but I never got the chance to tell him. It had all happened so fast on that day. We were just kids, young and dumb. We'd snuck out to go play by the riverbank. One minute we were splashing each other in the river, the next moment, Thomas was being carried away in the current. I tried to save him, but Tony pulled me back to shore. Even thinking about it now, I still couldn't help but burst into tears. Don't cry, Em. I'll always be here for you. And I knew he would be. Deep down, I knew Tony always had feelings for me. But I didn't feel the same way. <sighs> After that, Tony drove me home. Seeing my exhausted look, he said before I went inside, Get a good night's sleep, Em. Remember, we've got that interview tomorrow. Gosh, I almost forgot. Tony probably thought I was the worst employee ever. <laughs> and yes, you can guess it, Tony is my boss. After years in the orphanage, he was adopted by a super smart family that had inspired him to strive to become someone important, and he'd eventually built a food startup. Anyway, the following morning, despite still feeling worn out, I had no choice but to put on a brave face to go to work, as I had a marketing team to lead. But as I walked into the lobby, a guy bumped into me. He helped me up and frantically apologized, explaining he was in a rush. I looked up and was about to nag him, but... Wait, why does he look so familiar? In fact, he looked exactly like... It's you! You... I stammered, but I couldn't even finish my sentences because he'd rushed into the lift and the doors had closed. I must have been seeing things. Honestly, throughout the whole interview, I could barely concentrate. Could there be two people looking that similar on this earth? I was lost in thought when the next applicant came in, and it was him! Both Tony and I stared in shock. He was the spling image of Thomas! He couldn't be. I mean, Thomas had died years ago. We both were too stunned to say anything until his voice broke the silence. Hi, I'm Dustin, and I'm here to interview for the marketing position. I looked at Tony, and he looked just as confused as I did. But, yeah, it wasn't Thomas. This guy was from Illinois and had never even been to Missouri. Okay, so here's Thomas's doppelganger. Fair enough. The interview went well, and even though he was a bit arrogant, he knew what he was doing, so we hired him. When I left the room, surprisingly, Dustin was still waiting for me outside. He offered to treat me to lunch as an apology for earlier. I agreed, as I was desperate to ask him more questions. During lunch, I kept mentioning the orphanage, some of Thomas's hobbies and things he hated, but Dustin didn't even bat an eyelid. I was disappointed because I really hoped Dustin would actually be Thomas. 
That night, I barely slept. I couldn't stop thinking about Dustin. It's ridiculous, but I still had a strong feeling that he really was my childhood sweetheart. Suddenly, I got a message from Tony. Saw you hanging out with Dustin. Wake up, Em. He's not Thomas. Ugh, I didn't need to hear that. The next day, I couldn't take my eyes off of Dustin. At lunch, I watched as he put honey on his watermelon, and I almost freaked out. That was exactly what Thomas used to do. Oh my, I blurted out. I then told Tony what I just saw as soon as he sat down, but he just laughed and said, Honestly, Em, tons of people do that. Do you really think that our Thomas could be that arrogant? Seeing that I was still unfazed, he continued, But if you still want to check, just give him a peach. Things can change, but allergies don't, right? OMG, Tony was a genius. He probably was just kidding, but I was super serious. So the next day, I bought Dustin a peach pie to welcome him to the team. But to my surprise, he ate it up with pleasure and seemed totally fine. Okay, clearly I needed to let this go. He wasn't Thomas. End of. But if only things were that simple. And even though I knew Dustin wasn't Thomas, I still felt attracted to him. He was smart and sweet and so much fun to be around. Eventually, we started hanging out and became very close. We didn't actually make anything official, but we were low-key dating already. However, it was impossible to hide things from Tony. One time, our company went on a team bonding weekend, and we'd arranged a tennis competition. We had to pair up, so obviously I would go with Dustin, but as we're about to go sign up, then Tony came to ask me to be his partner too. My god, it was so awkward. Then Tony said in a very sulky tone, Okay, how about we have a little competition? The winner gets to pair up with Emma. And so they had a swimming race. That's so embarrassing. I knew Dustin couldn't swim, so I started to panic. But he got in the pool anyway. Obviously, Tony won. But who cares? He was acting like a child. I rushed over to help Dustin, who was left coughing and choking on the water. And at that moment, I realized that I was falling for him so much. But since then, there were rumors in the company that Dustin was only flirting with me to get promoted. One morning, we were walking through the lobby together when two girls started whispering about us. So Dustin took my hand and went straight to the girls saying, I love Emma. What's wrong with that? Hmm, tell me. Go on. At that exact moment, Tony appeared and asked if he could have a word with Dustin in his office. I was so nervous. Now everyone knew we were in some weird triangle, and I didn't like it one bit. Then one of my colleagues overheard Tony telling Dustin that if he didn't leave me alone, he'd be fired. I couldn't believe it. I went to find Tony right away, and before I could even confront him, he said, Yes, it's true. I asked those girls to start the rumors, and I also asked that jerk to give up on you. It was me. I did it all. I just don't get it, Em. Why have I ever been good enough for you? Tony, wait. It's been ten years. Why couldn't you give me a chance? Why can't you let Thomas go? Some guy who looks like him walks up and you totally forget about me? He's a loser compared to Thomas. Don't you dare call him a loser, I said. See, in the end, you still care about him only, not me. Tony shouted and stormed off. I hated to be in this situation. On the one hand, I truly liked Dustin, but Tony was not only my lifesaver, but also my best friend, who'd stuck by my side through all the highs and lows. What a dilemma. In the end, I decided to have a little space from Dustin just until things cooled down. Maybe then the rumors would stop and people would quit being so negative about him. But that wasn't to be so. You see, our new product that hadn't even been released yet suddenly appeared on the website of our direct competitor. Someone must have leaked the confidential file. But who? An investigation was opened and all of our computers were checked. You won't believe it but the IT team had been able to recover a deleted email that had been sent to our rivals from Dustin's outbox. Dustin denied it, and he demanded to check the CCTV. 
That's how we caught Mike, one of our senior employees, at Dustin's computer sneakily doing something. And to think, he'd put the blame on Dustin. After the truth came out, I went over to Dustin, but he seemed mad as he said, You think I'm a jerk too, don't you? That's why you've been giving me the cold shoulder. I told him I never believed he'd done it. Then I took his hand. I'm so sorry. It's just that I've been through some stuff. Then we hugged. Oh my, I missed him so much. But the drama didn't end there. The info leaked had caused our company huge losses. We had thousands of meetings, and the stress was unreal. Feeling so deflated, I went up to the rooftop to get some air. Suddenly, I heard Dustin's voice somewhere. He was on the phone with someone, talking about some plan to steal our company's products. No way! Without even thinking, I charged over and snatched his phone away to see that he was talking to... Mike? Oh my god! Had they been accomplices from the beginning? I was so angry, but actually more disappointed. So I asked him to resign and stay away from my sight. I know I should have exposed him to the whole company instead of letting him go that easy, but I guess my heart couldn't bear to do that. (sighs) I felt so bad, especially towards Tony, the best friend who's always by my side, while I was busy chasing after a jerk. I lost contact with Dustin after that, and I barely had time to think about it because our company was on the brink of bankruptcy. But one day, I got a call from him, followed by a message saying, Please don't ignore me. I've got something important to tell you. So we met up the next day at a coffee shop, and as soon as I saw him, I said, Look, Dustin, I've had enough of your lies. Please just get to the point. Then he replied, Emma... I admit that I only came to work for your company to steal your ideas, but seeing you and Tony after all these years, and falling for you all over again, well, that wasn't part of my plan. I was confused. After all these years? What are you talking about? Then he showed me his wrist, and he was wearing a friendship bracelet. Remember this? You gave it to me on my birthday ten years ago. O. M. G. What was going on? I couldn't believe my eyes. I'd given this to Thomas. But then why? But the peach, I continued. He just laughed and said, I overheard you guys' plan, so I made sure to take allergy meds just before. Then he went on to explain that he was Thomas, and that he'd been lucky enough to be saved that day on the river. There was a family who were out in the river searching for their drowned son, but instead of finding him... They found Thomas, and so they kindly adopted him and changed his name to their sons, Dustin. This was insane. Here was Thomas right in front of me, after all these years. And guess what? His adoptive father is the director of our rival company, and so he'd asked Dustin, or should I say Thomas, to come and infiltrate our company. Thomas kept apologizing for it, saying how much it had tormented him, and that he just missed me and had to tell me the truth. My head was spinning. This was all too much. I needed a moment to think it all through. But in the end, we decided that he could help our company by uploading a post to expose the truth. Obviously, as soon as Tony heard about it all, he was furious. He was mostly mad at me because I'd covered for Thomas. He'd even stopped talking to me for a while. But putting that aside... After Thomas's post, things got better for our company. We were able to launch new products as scheduled, and he even contributed some capital to help with our new project. Now our companies are still rivals, but at least it's now a fair competition. As for Tony and I, we eventually made up. He came to find me one day after work and said, Um, I'm so sorry for how childish I've been. I was just jealous of you and Thomas. I was too selfish to consider your feelings. But... You and Thomas, I want you guys to be together. You two are made for each other. I couldn't stop crying as he said that. It meant so much to me. And guess what? It has now been a whole year since Thomas came back into our lives. And the three of us are back to being the best of friends. Oh, and I should probably add that Thomas and I are engaged. We're so happy. And we're even opening an orphanage together for homeless kids like us. 
I'm going through many phases, but I finally found peace in life. I guess it all worked out after all. I arrived to find that he'd turned his bedroom into a mini theater, complete with scented candles and glistening fairy lights. He handed me a bowl of popcorn, and as we nibbled our way to the bottom, a carefully written letter came into sight that said, I've been in love with you ever since we were little kids. I've held back my feelings as I didn't want to ruin our friendship, but I can't deny them any longer. So, will you be my girlfriend? Ah, uh, how can he be so gorgeous and sweet and... Uh... Hey, dummy, you writing that cheesy stuff again? Just drop it already. Let's go prank Mr. Weasley. Okay, I'm coming. Hmm, if only what I wrote came to life. That's my best friend since childhood, Adrian. And as you can see, I have the biggest crush on him. But he only sees me as a bro. How ironic. I'm pretty sure if I confessed my feelings to him, he'd weird it out saying it's gross and stuff. So I just wrote my dream reality down in my novel and posted it on Wattpad. I even used a pen name. I couldn't risk Adrian finding out, because... Help! Awkward alert! Anyway... It's easier this way, as I didn't want my parents to find out either. Yep, they weren't exactly supportive of my writing career. They wanted me to become a lawyer and take over the family firm just like my dad, and his dad, and blah blah blah. They made me study hard so I'd get into this prestigious law school, but it was just so dull and my heart just wasn't into it. One day, as I was sipping a macchiato at my favorite coffee shop, a group of girls walked in chattering excitedly about a book by the new author, Agatha C. Huh? Did I hear them right? Curious, I approached them and politely asked to see the book and... Oh. My God. It was my pen name right on the cover. I scanned through the first few pages and saw my words. Did this mean my book was published? Ouch! <laughs> so all this was real. So someone must have given my book to the publisher. Then it's gotta be Mrs. Jensen. Yes, she is the most respected writer and has loads of connections in the publishing industry. And lucky me, she was my mentor. Hi, Mrs. Jensen. I'm just calling to say I'm so grateful for what you've done for me. Cecilia, calm down. What are you talking about? The book, of course. Mrs. Jensen, my book got published thanks to you, right? You're talking nonsense, young lady. I've barely started reading your book. So how could it have been published without my notice? What? So Mrs. Jensen didn't send it. Then who did? What do you mean you can't disclose their identity? It's my book! Miss, all I can say is that the person who brought it here claims to be the author of the book and chose not to reveal themselves by publishing it under a pen name. We, as the publisher, are legally bound by that, so I can't help you any further. What on earth was he talking about? Some random person stole my book and my pen name? I needed to prove they were both mine. Hmm. Aha! My Wattpad page! I tried to log into my account to show the director, but access denied? Oh, no, no, no. Someone must have messed with it. I was gonna use it to apply for a writing scholarship at college, and now it was all gone. As if that wasn't bad enough. I suddenly received an email from the writing competition I'd applied for, saying they denied my entry due to plagiarism of a Wattpad page. My Wattpad page! Ugh! So, bro, what's with the King Kong face? <laughs> oh, come on. You'll be less of an ugly duggling if you smile more. See? My gosh, could he just stop being like that for once? He made it very clear we had zero chance of being together. I got it, but he didn't have to rub it in my face like that. Fine then, he'd never have to see me again. After that, I was determined to transfer to another school by the next semester, one that would appreciate my writing talent. Somewhere like Eastwood Academy. It's a school full of literature records. Besides, I happen to know someone there, Lewis the president of the literature club, and also an uprising star in the writer world. He's not only super talented, but incredibly nice too. He'd help me loads with my novels. But getting into that school would be tough. 
So, every day, with my game face on, I buried my head under stacks of books, while Adrian tried his best to distract me. One time, he told me to ditch class and go see the new Batman movie with him. I'd waited months for that movie. But no, I'd got to get my head in the game. Adrian didn't give up that easily, though. Only, right at that moment, the teacher appeared behind his back, yanked his ears, and gave him a ticket to the detention room. There went the Batman movie for him. <laughs> Another time, he came up with a prank for Mr. Jones, the P.E. teacher who made him run ten laps around the school for being late. But, sorry, the new Cecilia ain't got time for any of his childish stuff. So, when Adrian gave me Mr. Jones's phone and told me to hide it away, I just calmly handed it back to him. As Mr. Jones returned to the teacher lounge, he saw Adrian pouring some liquid into his tumbler, and that's how Adrian got himself two detention tickets. <laughs> After that, Adrian finally noticed that I had been acting differently. Cece, what is up with you? You keep ignoring me. Are we not friends anymore? Don't call me Cece. I'm still mad at you, okay? So, yeah, I want to transfer to Eastwood Academy. You know, Lewis's school. Oh, I see. Stop the act. I know it already. What? Did he know that I like him? Had he read my book? You like Lewis. Huh? Oh. Phew. But hang on. He really thought that? And was he annoyed? Hmm. Interesting. Yep. In fact, he asked me out to dinner this Saturday. Really? Okay, then. I'll go with you. Can't trust this guy. And so Adrian tagged along. He kept complaining about how I dressed up all pretty for Lewis, and how he had the nerve to be late. So this is what he's like when he's jealous? Kinda cute, though. As Lewis arrived, he gave me a big hug, and I could feel Adrian's glare behind my back. <laughs> I sat close to Lewis and giggled at everything he said. He immediately got what I was trying to do, so he acted along, putting his arm around my shoulder and slightly stroking my hair. At one point, I even helped Lewis take a fallen eyelash out. And oh boy, Adrian couldn't help but lunge forward to separate us. Right at that moment, I heard a familiar voice from behind. Cecilia? And who are these young men? Lewis? Oh, hi Mrs. Jensen. What a small world. You know Lewis too? She didn't answer my question. Instead, she gave me a stern look, then dragged me outside. Cecilia, what are you doing with that no-good traitor? You mean, Lewis? Who else? He was heavily criticized and boycotted by the whole writer's community. I strongly suggest you give him a wide berth. Oh my. I had no idea Lewis had such a bad reputation. He was always so kind to me. Unless this was just an act because he wanted something. Like my novel. What if he was the one who stole it? This was not good. I rushed back to my table, quickly said goodbye to Adrian, then dragged Lewis away. Did you or did you not steal my book? What? No. Did Mrs. Jensen tell you that? Turns out, he used to be Mrs. Jensen's brightest mentee. Then he fell in love with her daughter Demi, and they started dating behind her back. But then out of the blue, Demi suddenly broke up with him. Heartbroken, he cut all ties with her and her mom. But Mrs. Jensen took offense at this and had been on his back ever since. Gosh, now my head was spinning. I had no idea who to trust. Come to think of it, back in my menti months, I also lost one of my manuscripts. I sort of ran into a dead end with that one, so I didn't do any digging, but it can't be a coincidence, right? It must have been Mrs. Jensen who stole them. No way! She's an incredible writer. Why would she do something like that? There's no better explanation for this. Don't worry. I've got a plan to expose her for the stinking thief she is. He then called the publisher, pretending to be some big-shot producer, and asked them to arrange a meeting with the author of my stolen book, as he'd like to produce a high-budget movie based on it. Brilliant, isn't it? We arrived at the rendezvous in awesome disguises and waited for this to play out. Her tension rose as the footsteps got closer. And then, standing at the door was, well... Mrs. Jensen! How could you? I trusted you! Cecilia? What's going on? Oh, drop the act. There's no movie. 
We only planned this trap to expose you for the book thief you are. Mrs. Jensen persistently denied our accusations and claimed she was only here because her daughter arranged a big surprise for her. Then Lewis and Mrs. Jensen started quarreling with each other and it all got messy. Stop! Both of you, please just stop! Demi, please explain yourself. I... It was me, okay? I stole your book, Cecilia. I saw it on Mom's desk. I'm so sorry. I don't understand. You don't need to steal someone else's hard work. You already are an excellent writer. No, Mom, I'm not. I've tried so hard to meet your expectations, but I just can't. I didn't want to disappoint you, so I stole your mentee's work. Including yours, Louis. I was so ashamed of myself I couldn't face you after that. I'm so, so sorry. Louis let out a long sigh, then pulled Demi in for a hug and comforted her. Right at that moment, Adrian barged in and grabbed Louis's collar. You jerk! You were flirting with Cecilia a day ago, and now you're canoodling with another girl right in front of her? Adrian, stop! It's not what you think! Then I led him out of the restaurant. Turns out, he saw me leaving the house with Louis looking all weird, so he decided to follow us here. Um, the truth is, I don't have a crush on Louis. I was just trying to see if you think of me as more than just a friend. Um, well, I do like you. Like, a lot. But I don't want to risk our friendship. I can't bear the thought of not having you in my life, so I figured it'd be best to treat you as one of the guys. Guess what? I like you too, idiot. So, what do you say? Yeah, let's give it a shot. But you have to promise me if things don't work out, we'll still be friends, okay? Promise. Then we pinky swore, just like when we were little kids. Only this time, he pulled me in for the best kiss ever. Finally, my book's mine again. And guess what? It has just become the number one bestseller novel according to the New York Times. Ah! This calls for a celebration. Adrian, will you help me with the guest list for the party? Sure, sweetie. Who do you want to invite? Now, let's see. There's my parents, who were so impressed with my independent work that they're now letting me follow my writing dreams. There's also Louis and Demi. Aw, they make such a cute couple. Demi decided to start over with her writing career, this time without the pressure from her mom. And with Louis's help, she's got a bright future ahead. And last but not least, Mrs. Jensen, who's now fully supportive of her daughter's career and her relationship with Louis. Huh, <laughs> I guess it's a happy ending for both my novel, me, and everyone I care about. How's it possible that I've never set foot in a place this close to me before? It's kind of dark and eerie. If only it was covered in flowers, then it'd totally be a Disney castle. Oh, someone's here. I went to say hi, but she didn't seem very welcoming. Stay away from this spooky place before it sucks the life out of you, young girl. So that means you're not working here anymore? The maid just shook her head before she hurried off. Here comes my chance. Hey guys, Joe Casta here. And this Dracula-esque castle is none other than Mr. Joseph Williams. Are you wondering who that is? Hmm, I'm curious too. All I know about him is that he's my parents' creditor, and I'm here to ask him to extend the deadline for their debt. But as one of his mates just quit, I could work here to pay off the debt instead, right? Hello, I'm Jocasta, your new maid. No answer. Should I just come in? If anything, the master should blame the old maid for leaving the gates open. So I had to find my own way inside. Hello? I'm the new maid. Master, are you here? No? Not here. Not here either. Is he still sleeping at this hour? Oh, there he is. Huh? He's not old and gray like I thought he'd be. I introduced myself, then he returned to his painting and coldly said, Work off your debt? Fine. Let's see how long you'll last. Just keep in mind, don't ever make me angry. Oh, master, you're worrying over nothing. I wouldn't even care about you. But turns out he wasn't worrying over nothing. He's actually infuriatingly difficult. The curtains must remain drawn during nighttime. There must be absolutely no noise at all, and his bedroom is strictly forbidden. Who gave you permission to sit there? Oops, I forgot. I must keep a distance of ten feet from him at all times, even during meals. Phew, finally it's time to rest. 
Though I've been working here for a couple of days, I'm still not used to Master Joseph's ridiculous rules. Huh? What's that staring at me? Ah! Rat! There's a rat! Help! What on earth are you shrieking about at this hour? You dare to disturb my sleep? Master, save me! There it is! It's coming! He stood bravely like a warrior, ready to fight the beast. Look at his broad shoulders, his hair, his chiseled face, and... His every movement is so smooth. That hideous rat was finally running scared. What a relief! You're making a fuss over nothing. Move to another room tomorrow. This one is too shabby. Looking closely, my fastidious master looks kind of handsome, doesn't he? Well, living here isn't so bad now that I've got the hang of his rules. <laughs> Bring me a cup of tea. Yes, master. Here you go. Pass it to me. Huh? Are we off social distancing now? I excitedly handed him the cup of tea, but he missed it and tea spilled all over him. Clumsy dummy! Can't you look at what you're doing? I hurriedly wiped the stain on his clothes and apologized profusely, but he roared again. Stop! How dare you come this close to me! Get out! Jeez, his temperament changed like the seasons. Hot, cold, hot, cold. Whatever. I'll just go home then. Indeed, no place like home. Oh, how comfy. I told Judy, my bestie, about my week working in the castle. Interested? Wanna come with me someday? No, no, no chance. Haven't you seen anything unusual there? Then Judy said rumor had it that a mad scientist once lived there. And werewolves too. His horrible howls could be heard during a full moon. You have to be careful. There's a reason why no one goes there. Oh no, it's today. Wolves howling under the moon? Never mind, Judy is just being childish. Who still believes in such fiction? Definitely not me. So, ta-da, I'm back again. Honestly, I need this job. I can't let him fire me, even if I have to cling to his leg and beg, but where is he? Should I... I opened the door to see him lying there, surrounded by dull paintings, while tools scattered everywhere. What happened? I tried lifting him, nudged him, still he wouldn't come around. Then suddenly, his eyes opened. Hey, the ten-foot rule doesn't apply because that was an emergency. Have you eaten anything since yesterday? As I thought, if you still want to kick me out now, you'll have nothing to eat. After that incident, Joseph seemed more at ease. He stopped threatening me with his rules and just let me ramble on. One time, when I was napping on the couch after cleaning, he even put a blanket on me. <laughs> I haven't slept yet, dear master. Then one day, a middle-aged woman appeared at the gate. She introduced herself as Joseph's mom and gifted him a beautiful bird. But she didn't come inside and just sarcastically said, Oh, my son's got a new maid again. This weird boy. So sorry for you, poor girl. I brought the bird to Joseph, excitedly told him that his mom just dropped by. Look what lovely present she got you. Lovely? That woman's just mocking me. I'm stuck in this place like a bird in a cage. I think it's a thoughtful gift. You seem to like painting birds. Stop prying. This is none of your business. Okay, I'm sorry. But it's your own choice to isolate yourself from the outside world. Come with me. I have something special to show you. Oh, this place is still as gorgeous as the first time I came here. Looks like Joseph is mesmerized too. See? The world is beautiful. You just need to look. We were walking along the blooming flower path. Then suddenly... He's coming! The wolf! Wolf! Then all the gardeners immediately scrammed in panic. What have I done to you, you morons? Beautiful, you say? Then Joseph stormed off. I tried to catch him, but... Ouch! I tripped over a rock. Oh, it hurts! It freaking hurts! Then let me apply the antiseptic cream. No, that will only make it worse. Maybe doing something fun could ease the pain. I'll be distracted from this. Please, can we watch a movie? And of course, he couldn't refuse. Oops. Awkward. Clearly, I didn't think it through when picking this rom-com. Wonder what my master is thinking. Oh gosh, there's no need to be that emotional. His scary appearance startled me. Eyes turned white, mouth snarled, as if he wanted to eat me alive. I tried to stay calm to ask him what was going on, but Joseph was like a madman, frantically smashing things and howling. Stop! Joseph, please don't do it. Ah, my arm. Realizing that he just hurt me, Joseph seemed to regain his senses. He then ran off in a panic. I quickly hugged him. It's okay. It's okay. Calm down. Once he'd felt better, he started telling me his biggest secret. Since childhood, he'd had difficulty controlling his emotions, which often led to outbursts of anger. 
Later on, the moon also triggered this reaction after his stepfather passed away on a full moon night, and it then became traumatizing because Joseph feared he'd been the cause of his death. That was also the cause of the tension between him and his mother. I think I was born with this strange condition. As a child, my stepfather used to give me some medicine to keep it under control. His stepfather used to give him pills? Judy also mentioned the mad scientist who used to live here. Is that... Hmm, I have to figure it out. One night, I sneaked into the room that Joseph forbade me to enter. On rummaging around, I found a tape that showed me the whole terrifying plan of his stepfather to regularly give Joseph a power-boosting pill as an experiment, and also to take him to the mountains to test out some new crazy invention. What on earth was that? But I can't tell Joseph right away. He needs to be mentally stable first. So I started off by taking him out for a walk, and when he felt comfortable enough, I suggested we go downtown together for some grocery shopping. He was just like a hedgehog, prickling up every time someone accidentally touched him. But, of course, I know how to tame this hot headmaster, just like this. There you go. Then we started tidying and redecorating the whole castle to liven up the mood of this place. When we got to the last room, his stepfather's, he seemed a bit hesitant. It's been so long. This room also needs cleaning, else the furniture may become damaged. Do you know anything about your stepfather's videos? Uh, how do you know? Then Joseph searched for a memory card, then gave it to me. I was so scared that I hid it and never dared look at it. I wanted to destroy it once, but on second thought, it contains the last images of my stepdad, so I've always kept it here. Huh? This wasn't what I meant. So there's another video apart from the ones I saw. This may shed light on everything. If you don't mind, can I watch that video? I'm quite curious. From that day, we never spoke of the videos again. Instead, we went for walks, cooked, and meditated together. And today's schedule is this art exhibition. Look at his surprised face. <laughs> they look familiar, right? Don't tell me you don't recognize your own artwork. It seems that each painting tells a story. I can't wait to know who the artist is. They must be an experienced and profound person. I knew it. These compliments will help him erase his own self-doubts. Back from the exhibition, we noticed a delicious smell coming from the dining room. Who could that be? It was Joseph's mother. Joseph seemed surprised by his mom's presence, but I wasn't because I was the director behind the scene. In fact, I secretly asked her to organize that exhibition. Watching the video cleared everything up. On that moonlit night, the mad scientist took Joseph to the mountains to test the effects of a super power boosting concoction. But when he saw Joseph reacting abnormally, he panicked and ran away. So the accident happened. It wasn't Joseph's fault. He was, in fact, a victim. I told Joseph's mom the truth beforehand, which led to this touching reconciliation. Now that things were clear as day, they have untied the knot in their hearts. His mother decided to move here to help him overcome his trauma of the moon with me. Oh, he also told me about the time he dropped a teacup on purpose as an excuse to push me away so that I'd be safe. How sweet and caring he is. Oh shoot, who left this curtain open? I hurried over to close it when suddenly a hand gently touched mine. Before you came, I really never thought I'd ever have the courage to face moonlight. But Jocasta... With you by my side now, anything feels possible. I stand here before you, looking back fondly on the four years of legacy we've all made together. Do you see her? The girl in the graduation gown giving that awesome speech? Well, that was me, Taylor Flores. Take a look at my parents. They looked so proud of me. Oh. But I will never forget this face. This is Jonas, my arch enemy. We were the top two students in our school and had been competing against each other since forever. But too bad, Jonas, you lost the final battle because I was the one asked to give the graduation speech, not you. It's safe to say that I had it all figured out after high school. First, I would move to New York to attend the most prestigious college in the city, majoring in English, of course. Then, when I graduated from college, I'd write my first novel, then publish it to acclamation and glory. Now, that's what I call a perfect plan. <laughs> Just wait for it. You will see my face on thousands of book covers. Taylor Flores' time has come. I want those pages by the end of Friday, else be prepared for a pay cut this month. Ugh! I hate deadlines! 
As you can see, my life didn't exactly turn out as I planned. What went wrong, you ask? Well, after I graduated from college, I pursued my writing dream. But every agent and publisher I sent my novel to rejected it. I kept pushing myself to write more, but then I ended up having writer's block. I couldn't create stories anymore, so I decided to switch to writing for newspapers. I used to think that if I had to write for a newspaper, then it'd at least be a famous one. But life is not a fairy tale. On the contrary, it's actually cruel and unfair. Well, at least it was to me, because my preferred newspaper rejected me a bunch of times. So now, I ended up here, working for this unknown news website with an all-time grumpy manager. <sighs> okay, so back to what was happening at the office. Suddenly, my phone buzzed through an email. Oh no, it's an invitation to my high school reunion. No way I could go back to my hometown and see everyone. They'd all see what a loser I'd become and I'd be the joke of the party. All the worst case scenarios were running through my mind until a call from Amelia came. It's my bestie from high school. She asked me if I was going, and I told her never in a million years. If you don't go, then everybody will assume that you failed in life and you're too ashamed to go. So the best thing you can do is to attend and keep your head up high. Man, Amelia really had a point and was great at persuading other people. No wonder she's now a lawyer. Ugh. So here I was, in front of the venue, feeling so nervous that I thought I may throw up. But it's now or never, right? I just needed to put my game face on. I entered the room to a load of unfamiliar faces. Huh? Was I in the wrong place? I was about to leave when I suddenly bumped into somebody and fell on the floor. Ouch. I looked up. It was a chubby lady who was holding her baby in one arm and gripping a toddler's hand with the other. I instantly apologized. I'm so sorry. I hope I didn't hurt the kids. Oh, it's fine. You're lucky my belly was big enough to block you. <laughs> she then paused and took a closer look at me. Is that you, Taylor? You look great. Let's get inside. The party just started. Wait, she knew me. But who was she? I guess she did look familiar. Maybe I should wait for Amelia and ask her, as she had kept in touch with most of our classmates. I looked around, trying to find someone familiar to have a chat with, but my gosh, why was it so hard? But then I saw a woman who had beautiful, long, blonde hair, and I instantly knew who it was. Jessica the hottest and most popular girl in high school, and the captain of the cheerleader team. I walked over to her, and we began to catch up. We chatted a lot, and she was so funny. Hmm, I don't remember her being so hilarious. My god, you're so funny, Jess. Hey, Jessica! I heard Amelia shout. I looked over at her, and she was walking towards someone else. It was the chubby lady from earlier. So... She's Jessica? Oh my, she definitely changed a lot. But if that was Jessica, then who was this? Thank God I didn't say her name earlier. I excused myself from this mystery person, then whispered to Amelia, asking who the lady was I was talking to. Pete's me. Why don't we ask her directly? She then did exactly just that. The lady gave us a playful smile, saying, Try guessing. Are you Ashley? Nope. Natasha? Wrong. Tiffany? Negative. Wait, are you related to Jack Miller? You kind of look like him. Almost correct. Oh my, she wasn't related to Jack Miller because she is Jack Miller. Well, now she's Jill Miller. Turns out she never felt comfortable being a boy, so after high school, she underwent transgender surgery. Wow, that's incredible. I kind of felt overwhelmed, so I went to the bathroom to freshen up. On my way out, I saw a familiar face. It was Luke, the most handsome guy in high school. He was picking up trash and putting it in the garbage can. Aw, what a nice guy. We talked for a bit and... Oh, turns out he works here as the janitor. He was the one who recommended organizing the reunion here, and he was cleaning up as much as possible so later it wouldn't take him so much time. For real? Who would have expected that? 
I went back to the party and saw Amelia talking to a guy. Oh, who is this handsome dude? Amelia beckoned me over and introduced him to me. I couldn't believe my ears. It was Jonas, my arch enemy. The chubby dwarf Jonas with a face full of pimples now resembled an Abercrombie and Fitch model. Jonas just told me that he's been promoted to a higher position in his company. Ugh, seemed like he still kept his bragging habit. Some things never changed. Suddenly, Jonas asked me, What about you, Taylor? How has it been going for you lately? Oh, snap! I couldn't tell him that I was working for this awful news website. That would be so humiliating. So, thinking fast, I blurted out that I was a managing editor for this huge newspaper in New York. Jonas and Amelia looked at me in shock. In your face, Jonas. If I had a mic, I would definitely drop it. <laughs> I asked Jonas what position he was promoted to, and he replied, Oh, I, um, got chief technical officer. Ha, huh, nice try, but it was no match for my amazing <laughs> job. I won that battle, loser. Well, in general, the reunion went pretty well, even though I had to lie about myself, but whatever. It's not like I was going to see Jonas again, right? Wrong. A week later, I received a Facebook friend request from him. First, I ignored it, but then a few days later, he texted me via messenger, asking why I didn't accept him on Facebook. Ugh, that was so annoying. Fine, but first I had to readjust my page. I needed to hide photos, statuses, and tags that were related to my company. Done! Then Jonas began to text me. It was nice seeing you the other day. Would you like dinner sometime? Um, I'm sorry, what? Was he asking me out on a date? Or was this a prank? Because I live in New York. I told him that, and... Oh my god. He lives in New York too. Ugh, great. But the thing is, I told him last time that I'm an editing manager, and that's a busy job. So during our date, I asked Amelia to pretend to be my secretary and call me a bunch of times during dinner. However, before we could play our act, Jonas was the one who received a dozen calls and then had to leave early because of an incident at his company. After that, he texted me quite a lot, but still feeling bitter from being ditched at dinner the other day, I only replied to him after 30 minutes. Every time. But on days when he didn't text me, I found myself staring at my phone longing to hear from him. Jesus, I was falling for him? Jonas? Why Jonas? I couldn't understand myself anymore and was unable to stop my feelings. So when he told me he liked me, I said I liked him too. And soon we became a couple. It was great at first, but then Jonas insisted that he drive me to work and pick me up. Oh no, I refused, of course but he wouldn't take no for an answer. Ugh! So when Jonas dropped me at the fake office, I had to run. No, I had to sprint five blocks to my real office to make it on time. And then in the evening, I had to leave 30 minutes earlier to run back to the other office and wait for him to pick me up. The first three times, I could handle it. But Jonas wanted to drive me to work every day. That's enough. I needed a break from all this running. Eventually, I came up with an excuse. I bought a bike and told him that I wanted to ride to work, as it would be good for my health. Poof. I didn't have time to run five blocks each day anymore, because I had an important interview to prepare for. Oh yeah, I was applying to my dream newspaper. Again, if I did get in, I don't need to lie to Jonas anymore. And luckily, my interview went pretty well. I had a smile on my face as I walked over to the elevator. First it was just me, and then a bunch of employees went in. The elevator was about to close, when suddenly, from the outside, someone put his hand between the doors. Please wait! And that's when I saw a familiar face. Jonas! Our eyes met, and we both looked shocked. Then one of the employees said to him, Hey boss, I already finished the report, and we'll send it to you this evening. What? Why did the guy say that to him? When the elevator reached the ground floor, I quickly ran out of it. Jonas ran after me, held my hand, and said, Wait, let me explain. What is there to explain? 
We both lied to each other. Jonas held me in his arms and tried to keep me calm. Then he began telling me everything. Oh my god. Turns out he's the actual editing manager of this newspaper. Ugh! Well, that explains a lot. I should have known he didn't work in technology, as I once asked him to repair my laptop, and he ended up locking himself out of it. Hearing you say you had my job shocked me. I didn't want to embarrass you, so I made up another position. So he knew right from the beginning I was lying! Then why did you insist on driving me to work, when you already knew I didn't work there? <laughs> I was just messing with you. Besides, I was kind of curious to see how long you could keep the lie up for. I'm sorry. But the truth is, I like you. I have liked you since high school. Back then I was always competing with you because I wanted you to notice me. I thought I was about to throw a tantrum, but thinking back, it was all my fault. If I hadn't lied in the first place, then Jonas wouldn't have had to lie about himself. Right at that moment, I received an email from Human Resources. Oh god, I got in! They were so impressed by me that they had to email me right away. I was so happy that I hugged Jonas as he said, Congratulations, newbie. Now, let's get to work. Your first task is to go out on dinner with me. Yeah, so now Jonas and I work at the same place, and he's my boss. I used to hate losing to him, but now that he's my boyfriend, I feel fine. Actually, I'm really proud of him. <laughs> I was sitting at my usual spot in the common room during break time, coding of course, eyes glued to my MacBook Pro when suddenly, Evelyn, my best friend, barged in and ran straight over to a group of girls. Here she goes again. Guys, guys, I've got big news. You all know Helen Wright, the cheerleader? Kay, she has a huge crush on Dean. So she went to the locker and it said yes. Now guess what? I just saw them in the hallway kissing. Ha! Huh? These gossip vultures will believe anything. Confused? Let me wrap it up for you. They were talking about this mysterious locker situated in the school's back alley. The creepy part was it could actually speak and foretell your future love partner. For it to work, you had to visit the locker between 6 and 7 p.m. Tap on it exactly three times and say the spell. Roses are red, violets are blue, in a world of love, just we two. Then, ask it if you and your crush are compatible. If the locker said yes, then congratulations. But if no, then too bad. This proves it. The locker must have some sort of prophecy power. Of course, duh. You know why? Because it's possessed by a lovelorn spirit. <laughs> Oh boy, if only these naive kids knew the truth. The mystical locker that they so worshipped was actually a product of advanced IT, of which the mastermind was, moi. Didn't see that coming, did you? I'm Karina, by the way, but people like to call me Robot Girl because I'm a super proud tech genius. But kids my age didn't appreciate my talents as they only seemed to care about love. Especially Alicia over there. She despised IT and presumed that anyone into it was a stone-cold machine who'd never ever had a relationship. <laughs> so, being the tech was that I am, I had to come up with a brilliant plan to prove her wrong. I spent every bit of spare time I had coding. I hacked into the school system to collect students' infos, such as their star signs, blood type, hobbies, and career orientation. Then, I used this as a database to create a love compatibility calculator. And just like that, my first brainchild was born. Easy peasy. Using it was simple. All I had to do was insert the two names and it'd show me a yes or a no. Knowing how much my peers buy into the whole spiritual stuff, I devised my locker plan. I found this rusty locker at the dead-end alley behind our school. Super glued a walkie-talkie inside locked it well. Then, with the other walkie-talkie in hand, I stayed in the school equipment room, which is convenient enough to be on the other side of the wall. To top it up a notch, I even used a voice changer app to get a perfect ghostly haunted tone. 
Then, I anonymously spread rumors about the locker's magical powers onto the school's blog. My trick quickly took off, and since launch day, 15 couples have been successfully matched. Can you imagine? True love? Oh, please. It all came down to some simple algorithms. That's all. But, one more thing. I hadn't exactly told Evelyn about this. Yeah, I love her, but she's not the best at keeping secrets. To be exact, she's a walking speaker who couldn't help but blab any gossip she'd heard to the entire school. Anyway, I needed to test if the locker actually worked first. Then I'd tell her, maybe when I reach 20 successful couples. Luckily for me, keeping this one secret from her turned out to be easy, as her attention was all on her crush, Jace, the school's hot boy. In her eyes, Jace was like an angel or something. It seems like I'm the only one who didn't get the gooey eyes memo. One evening, I was taking my locker shift when I heard a familiar voice. Evelyn's! Oh boy, I could already guess she wanted to ask about her and Jace. The algorithm said yes, and I could hear Evelyn screaming ecstatically at the announcement. <sighs> Fine, if she's happy, I'm happy. But it didn't last long, as an hour later, just as I was about to leave, more footsteps came towards the locker, and I heard a knock on it. Roses are red, violets are blue. Hold on. Jace? What was he doing out here? Can I become a couple with... Karina? What? No way! Had something hit his head? I immediately said no. No calculator needed for that. He stayed silent at first, but then asked again if I'd be his girlfriend. The answer was still no. He asked the locker again and again, but no, no, no. Jeez, what's with this guy? The next day at school, I noticed Evelyn's wearing her lucky lilac dress. Oh no, was she going to confess to Jace? I had to stop this. Hey, I have an emergency thingy. You need to come with me. Karina, what are you doing? But it was too late as Jace was approaching us. Hey, what are you playing? Tug of war? <laughs> oh, I think you messed up your hair. Here, let me. Jeez, he wasn't necessarily close. And the worst part was that Evelyn just witnessed the whole thing. Right at that moment, the bell rang and she left for class. Jace, this idiot! The locker said no already, and there he went, messing it all up. Now, I had to wait till the end of class to explain things to Evelyn. But things weren't that easy, as every time I tried to approach her, she gave me this flustered look, then hurried away. One time, I managed to reach her, but then, yep, you guessed it, Shameless Jace showed up and ruined the conversation. Gosh, this leech wouldn't quit bothering me. In math class, he asked the teacher to let him change from Evelyn's group to mine, because he suddenly wanted me to tutor him. The worst part was, the more I tried to ignore him, the more interested in me he seemed to get. Until one day, as I was running away from him, I bumped into someone. It was the school's head boy, Killian. Oh man, I was sure I was in trouble, but... Can you see her bothering her? Quit it already. Did Killian just defend me? But, uh-oh, that sure made Jace mad. It's none of your business. Excuse me, this is a library, not a theater club. Keep quiet or out. Phew, thank God I got out of there. But, come to think of it, that was a strange thing for the normally stern-faced Killian to do. Hmm, whatever. I don't have time to think about this right now. So far, the locker had predicted 19 couples successfully. I just needed one more match, then I could proudly make my invention public. And voila! My app would change the whole world's dating scene. Here it is, my 20th client. Wait, isn't that... Killian? And guess who he's asking about? Yeah. Me! Maybe everyone was right about the robot girl nickname. Cause how could I be so clueless all this time about Jace and now Killian? I inserted the data and the result? 
was a no. But hang on. What if I did it, Killian? Would that make Jace give up and stop bothering me? And Evelyn wouldn't keep her distance from me anymore. It settled. The locker pronounced yes. Monday morning, I was in the study hall, working on the math group project with Chase, when a note was passed to me. Hey, I know this is a bit sudden, but would you like to go out with me? Saturday, 3 p.m.? Killian. I took a peek at him and saw him smiling for the first time ever. Okay, I was about to write my answer when Jay snatched the note, read it, then stared straight at Killian. You, me, outside. What was he gonna do now? I sneakily followed them to the hallway, but Evelyn appeared right behind me and signaled me to shush. That was when I heard Jace asking what was going on between me and Killian. Nothing really. Only the infamous love locker foretold Karina and I would be together. Jace was too stunned to speak as he turned purple with rage. So there's nothing going on between you and Jace? Of course not. I've been trying to tell you that this whole time. You've heard everything? Sorry, I didn't mean to. So, what do you think? About the date? Um, sure. I'd love to. I could see Jace's boiled over from behind, but what could he do other than bear his grudge and storm off? <laughs> Problem solved! Saturday arrived and Killian picked me up for our date. He even asked for my parents' approval, then opened the car door for me like a true gentleman. To be honest, I was kinda nervous, but he was so good at comforting me. He then took me to the super cool ice cream drive through And coincidentally, we picked the same flavor. Butter pecan. <laughs> Before I noticed, I'd felt so comfortable around him already. And you know what the best part was? Our last stop was a planetarium. We sat side by side beneath the glistening star-filled sky. Whoa. This date was much more than I expected. I got to see this whole new side of him. One that is so warm and caring. Being with him made me feel good. Maybe the algorithms weren't quite accurate, right? It did say Killian and I would never be a couple, but what I was feeling then proved otherwise. I was still lost in thoughts when my alarm suddenly went off. 5.15 already? Right, I gotta get to the locker and change the walkie-talkie's battery. So I quickly said goodbye to Killian, then ran to the alley. As I was opening the locker to get the walkie-talkie out, Karina? Are you opening the locker? How? Unless you're... Oh. I don't know how, but you sure tricked the entire school. I froze on the spot, not knowing what to do. There's no need to freak out. I'm not gonna tell a soul. That is, as long as you become a girlfriend. Why are you so obsessed with me? You can have anyone else you want. Why me? Cause you're different, babe. You're interesting and somehow aren't easily swayed by me, which makes you a challenge. Ugh, this douchebag made me want to vomit. He could expose me all he wants, but I'd never ever go near him again. I shoved past him to leave, but suddenly he grabbed my hand and tried to force me into his embrace. Get off of me, you psycho! I never meant for it to turn out like this. I just wanted to prove that data was the driving force of compatibility. But maybe I'd been wrong after all. <sighs> I decided it was time to confess all to Evelyn before Jace told her first. Only the next morning, when I arrived to pick her up as usual, her mom told me she'd already left. Hmm, was there something I didn't know about? I turned on my phone notifications, and that's when I saw it. Alicia had posted the picture of Chase grabbing me, but the angle made it look like, in Alicia's words, we were kissing. Huh? So that's why Evelyn didn't want to see me. And what would Killian think of this? I arrived at school just as Killian stepped out of his car. I rushed toward him, and when our eyes met, I could see he was hurt. Then he just turned and walked away. Without thinking, I caught up with him and I poured my heart out telling him I was the one behind the locker, how I got involved with Chase because of Evelyn, 
and how I lied to him when he went to the locker. But that was also how I realized I had feelings for someone. For you. Excuse me? You're the one behind the love locker? No way. Gosh, I'm so glad I got all my secrets out. In that case, we have a big problem. Evelyn then walked me along the corridor, and what I saw was pure chaos. People were crying, arguing, and even fighting, all because of the locker. One couple was having a tearful breakup because the locker claimed they weren't meant to be. In the other corner, two girls were fighting because the locker matched them to the same guy. A boy was breaking stuff out of anger since the locker didn't match him with his crush. The entire lobby echoed the words, love locker. Gosh, how'd I been so oblivious to this before? I'd been so caught up with my own problems, I'd neglected the consequences of the locker I'd created. This was wrong, so wrong. I had to shut the locker down right now. I rummaged through my bag to find my MacBook, but this was my baby, my first brainchild. I... No, I must do this. <sighs> yeah, that was the right thing to do. Technology shouldn't be used to predict one's feelings. I've learned the hard way not to mess with anyone's relationship ever again. And that love is never ever simple. You don't need a mysterious object of the spiritual world to tell you who to date. You just gotta experience it. Well, it's been three months since I shut down the infamous love locker. Now, everything is finally back to normal. And guess what? I've got a boyfriend. Yep, Kilian and I just went official last week. Evelyn doesn't like Jace anymore. She vowed not to run after some good-looking pretentious jerk ever again. Instead, she's just gonna wait for the right guy to come along. About the love locker, when people realized it didn't work anymore, the speculations became rife. My personal favorite is that the spirit had found peace and left. But still, every now and then, I hear someone gossip about the haunted love locker that once turned the whole school upside down. And I can help but feel all goose pimply. Oof. This? Or this one? Ugh, this is such an impossible decision. It's my senior year, so I wanted this last prom to be the most memorable. I wonder which guy will ask me to prom first. Adam's cute, but he's so hot and cold with me. Then there's Devin, the school's hottest swimmer. Oh, and I also heard rumors that Ethan, the most popular jock in school, was planning to ask me to prom at the next baseball game. <laughs> my buzzing phone broke me from my thoughts. It was a message from my friend Donna saying, Phoebe, have you seen the news? Lockdown starts tomorrow. Oh my god, this couldn't be legit. Could it? What about prom? Then I received another message from the prom committee. Due to the current rule changes, unfortunately, prom's been cancelled. No! Unbelievable! My prom! <sighs> it was another message. Jeez, I was getting sick of them. I hoped it would be Donna telling me this was all a joke and prom wasn't cancelled, but no. I glanced at it and saw a text message from Jacob, a classmate I never spoke to. That's weird. Curious, I opened the message. Hey, Jacob. So, what do you want to ask me? Hi, and, um, can you help me model for a moment? I'm applying for the Art Institute in Chicago, and the application deadline is tomorrow. But I need to submit a drawing. I'll be posing for you to draw? But I've never modeled before. This sounds super important. Shouldn't you ask a professional? Well, don't worry. I already have all the ideas, and I think you are the most suitable person to model for me, as you're a natural beauty and that will show in my work. Especially your beautiful eyes. Okay then, if you say so. Let's do it. Jacob then instructed me how to pose. After that, he took out a piece of paper and started sketching carefully. Meanwhile, I was sitting there trying my best to help my friend by not moving. Hmm, 
Now that I had time to really look at him, I think Jacob is really handsome. Especially when he's so focused on drawing like this. Why's it taken me three years of high school to realize this? Strange. How can such a good-looking guy be pretty much invisible in my class? Maybe it's because he's a little on the shy side? Done. What do you think? Wow! You're so talented! I like it. I like it a lot. Really? When can we meet again? I'll give you this drawing. Oh, I thought you were going to send it with your college application. Um, give me a sec. Just like that, he disappeared from the screen without even answering my question. After a while, Jacob returned with a picture frame in his hand. Then he put the picture he'd just drawn of me in it and hung it up in his room. In the meantime, I'll hang it here, so it's safe and, well, I get to, um, see you every day. Why, why did he say it like that? He's totally making me blush by now. What about your college application? Actually, I submitted them already. So, you tricked me? I'm sorry, it's not like that. Actually, I wanted to ask you something else, but because I'm really nervous, I ended up blurting out that I wanted you to model for me instead. So what exactly do you want to ask me? If you don't talk, I'll hang up. Wait! I know it's cancelled and all, but I don't want to spend the rest of my life not knowing your answer. So, um, if I asked you to go to prom with me, would you say yes? Um, I don't know. Only when I receive an official invitation will I consider it. I was giggling to myself at this point. Our class's shyest guy was being so genuine. But then he took a deep breath and said boldly, Phoebe, will you come to prom with me? Aw, I have to admit, I was really touched by Jacob's invitation. So I replied, Yes! Dinner's ready, hun. Oh, that's my mom calling. I gotta go. Yeah, yeah, you go eat. Thank you. I've received the answer I needed anyway. I gave him my cutest smile and then ended the video call. Swoon? My heart was fluttering. After that moment, I couldn't stop imagining how great it'd be. Only if we weren't stuck in this stupid lockdown, Jacob would have escorted me to prom and... Oh my, imagine how perfect we would look together. Such a pity. Now all I could do was just think about him all day. A few days passed, only Jacob hadn't contacted me. Not once. This made me antsy. I was constantly checking my phone. Then there were times I was so close to tech him first. But for what reason, though? I had nothing to tell him. Aha! Got it! Phoebe? What happened? Jacob, I've screwed up. Calm down and tell me what's happened. I... I almost burned the house down. Huh? What? What did you do? I forgot to turn off the stove while frying the eggs. You see? Does it look like crime scene evidence? <laughs> what have you done to the poor pan? That worked a treat. As after that, we video chatted almost every day and talked about all kinds of things, from our dreams for the future to our favorite puddings. On the one rare day we didn't chat, I felt myself feeling restless. Is it possible that I was lovesick? One time, while I was standing in the garden talking to Jacob, Nancy, my gossipy sister, caught me. Expectedly, during dinner that night, Nancy told my mother that I had a boyfriend. Ugh, what a snitch. Why did my mother give birth to me and her as well? Fine. And FYI, my mom is one of those super strict types of parents. Phoebe, what did I tell you? Before graduation, you can't date. Mom put her fork down and gave me a serious look. But we're just friends. No buts. From now on, focus on studying and stop contacting him. Understand? Annoyed, I stormed off to my room. That night, I couldn't sleep a wink. I longed to hear Jacob's voice so badly. I missed him. Then, at midnight, I somehow ended up picking up my phone and texting him. I know it's late, but are you awake? I'm so stupid. 
Of course he wasn't going to be awake at this. Oh, it's Jacob. I'm awake. You want to talk? So he called me, and we talked in whispers so no one overheard me. I told Jacob about the argument with my mom. He advised me not to be angry with her because she just cared about me. Then he said, On your birthday this year, I'll come over and prove to your parents that you've chosen the right person. Choose the right person? What do you mean? I mean, will you be my girlfriend? I was still feeling somewhat confused when he suddenly started singing. But darling, just kiss me slow. Your heart is all I own. And in your eyes, you're holding mine. I love that Ed Sheeran song. My heart melted with each word Jacob sang, and I found myself softly saying, I do. Oh my god, he's officially my boyfriend now. This was so exciting. I just wish I was back at school to show him off. We secretly chatted every day, and he was the ray of light in my boring days during the lockdown. But then one day, he didn't reply. I didn't think much of it at first. You know, maybe he was busy drawing or something. But then, when the day was coming to an end, and I still hadn't received a reply from him, I started to freak out. Was he sick? Only at past midnight, he finally messaged me. I'm sorry. I feel kind of down today, so I couldn't talk to you. Oh no. Why was he so sad? Hearing this, I couldn't be patient anymore. So I called him right away, over and over. But the only response was a long beep, then followed by a text a little later. I don't want you to see me in this state. I'm sorry. What was wrong? He was always such an optimistic guy. Something really terrible must have happened to make him feel like that. Feeling anxious, I continued to call him, until, eventually, he gave in and answered. Then he told me what was wrong. Lockdown was the final straw for his wearing parents, and now they were getting a divorce! <sighs> I felt so sorry for him. Oh, how I wished I could have run to him right away! He actually only lived a few blocks away from me. So we planned to sneak out to see each other in the park. From a distance, of course. The plan was that I would open the door on the slide to run outside, while Mom was in the kitchen. Phoebe, what are you doing? I... I... Come inside and set the table. The food's getting cold. Ugh, my plan failed completely! <sighs> I'm sorry, I couldn't get out. My mom caught me. A few minutes later, Jacob's reply showed up. Turned out, he'd already snuck out and had been waiting for me at the park. I felt so guilty, so I called him at once. He tried to put on a smile, but I knew he was really bummed out, so I blew him a kiss to cheer him up. This really brightened him up. Then he said that as soon as lockdown was over, he was giving me a real kiss. Just like that, time went on and we learned how to make the most of this relationship in the pandemic era. Everything was good until one day he told me some news that struck me like a lightning bolt. He'd received an offer letter from the art college in Chicago. He'd got in! Of course, Jacob was excited, and I was really happy for him. But Chicago was a whole different state, so I'd never get to see him. Jacob said he was still wondering if he should go or not, as he didn't want to leave me. Me neither, but how could I tell him not to go? Jacob, please go chase your dream. Don't give it up over a girl whose hand you've never held. If I go, then what about us? Just leave it. Whatever will be, will be. After that day, there were no more messages or calls from Jacob. Perhaps he was busy arranging things for college. I missed him so much, but I had to let him live his life. <sighs> then, on the same day Jacob left, I received a package. I took it up to my room and opened it. Inside was the painting which he had asked me to model for. It's really beautiful. The painting! Now how am I supposed to forget you when I have to look at this every day, Jacob? <sighs> the city eventually came out of lockdown, and things were pretty much back to some kind of normal. It was just that... <sighs> I couldn't stop thinking about Jacob 
and how different things would be if he was still here. We hadn't spoken since that time we broke up. I guess it was easier this way, but it didn't stop it from sucking. And to make it even worse, today's my birthday, and all I could think about was him. I was sitting there trying to fake delight as my family brought me out a cake and sang me happy birthday. Hang on, who's that? Standing behind my parents? Oh my, it can't be. It's Jacob! Oh, yes, I found this one loitering outside. He seems keen to see you, and, well, it is your birthday, so I suppose I'll let the no-boys rule slide for today. Mom smiled. I couldn't help it. I darted out of the chair and leapt into Jacob's arms. I asked him why he was here, and grinning, he replied, I have a promise to keep. Then I introduced him to everyone, and being the perfect guy he was, he's really mature and friendly toward my family, and they love him. But soon the day ended, and he went to leave, so with reluctance, I walked him out to say goodbye. Jacob then held my hand and said, Look, Phoebe, when I was away, I realized how much I like you. And if you have the same feelings, could we give this long-distance relationship a try? Without giving me time to answer, he continued, I'll try my best to contact and come back here often. I will never leave you feeling lonely. I promise. His words were really touching, but... Jacob, I'm sorry. I don't think we can do long distance. Why not? Because I've applied to College Columbus in Chicago, and I got in. We're going to be neighbors! Hey Beans, welcome back to my channel. I'm so cranked to introduce today's special guest, my daughter Elle. Say hi, sweetie. Hi, we're making butter from scratch today. I'm so excited. Elle, can you please do this properly? Mom, it's the sixth take already. I can't even film my arms anymore. If you're still not satisfied, then film it yourself. Hey, I'm Elle, a high school student living in Wisconsin with my mom. From the outside, there's nothing out of the ordinary about us. Well, except that my mom's a vintage holic. See, she in fact became a famous YouTuber for her 1950s lifestyle. Living like this was such a hassle. But that's what puts food on our table, so I had to put up with it. However, sometimes mom even insisted that I join in her videos. Like today. Ugh. Not just that. Whenever we went out together, she made me wear the cheesiest vintage dresses. So I wouldn't ruin her aesthetic. As a hip-hop dancer, it was torture. See? I sure look way better in these clothes. Oh dear, what are those awful threads? Here, try this. It's really the bee's knees. Bee's knees, she said. More like granny. Ah, so pretty. Auntie, you have such excellent taste. That's Daisy, my cousin. And also schoolmate. Who gets along much better with my mom? Jeez, I can't let this hideous dress go home with us. If you like this so much, why don't you just take it instead, Daisy? Mom then walked to the counter with some more tacky clothes, ready to pay, but... Gee, where did I put it? <sighs> Guess I'll come back another time. Oh, missing something, Mommy? It's okay, Mrs. Faye. You're a regular, so you can pay us next time. Wait, what? No! So, now I had to wear this ugly dress to the boring event Mom was dragging me to. Because the more, the merrier. On the way there, Mom was talking a blue steak about how I should behave at the bash. When suddenly, huh? What now? Awesome! This must be the third time this hunk of junk has broken down this month. Isn't it fantastic? And we don't even have phones to call for help. Elle, I've told you. It'd be ridiculous to show up with smartphones while dressing like this. Besides, people used to live just fine without them. Stop relying on them so much. Trust me, some nobleman will soon come to our rescue. Stay here and wait all you want. I'm gonna go look for a garage. But I only managed a couple of steps before a fancy car pulled over, and an old man in a suit stepped out and offered to help. Turns out he's one of Mom's subscribers and even asked for a picture. Thank you so much for saving my chariot. You're the ginchiest. Gosh, here she goes again with her old-timey slangs. Eventually, we reached this Anceville. 
And as soon as we arrived, mom immediately ran to her celeb friends and posed for photos, leaving me lost and confused. While I was trying to navigate through this madness, some whispering caught my attention. Isn't that Faye? She's so extra. I can't even get past the first five minutes of her videos. Oh yeah? And still, mom thought the whole world was her fan. I don't get why she wanted to be here with these fake people that much. I was not having any of that stuffy place, so I went outside to get some air. As I wandered along the street, I spotted a group of teenagers dancing to old school hip hop. This is right up my alley. But wait, ugh, this stupid dress. My jam is coming on though. So letting my adrenaline take over, I joined the crowd. Everyone seemed impressed and even made room for me to shine. Then one of them joined me. I was really feeling it when a familiar screeching voice startled me. L, what on earth are you doing? Agitate the gravel now. Then mom dragged me to the car and drove me straight home. Gringles, do you understand that if anyone sees you like that, the perfect image I've built all these years will be in ruins? Pfft, then don't drag me into these things. Do it alone. Mind your manners. You should find something more practical rather than dancing like those good-for-nothing lazy bums. I'd had enough. Furious, I stormed into my room and stayed there all night. The next morning, I woke up to the rumbling sound of an empty stomach. When the coast was clear, I went downstairs to check the fridge for food. Ew, what's that rotten egg smell? Jesus, this fridge must be from Napoleon times! I reluctantly went for an instant soup, but the microwave wouldn't even heat it up. And guess what? My mom spent over $500 just for this thing's useless 50s look. Then I decided to put on a movie to blow off some steam. But the ancient TV wouldn't turn on either. Unbelievable! Is there anything in this rusty dollhouse that actually works? I need to get out of here before going insane. Oh, there's a new family moving in next door. Hang on, isn't that the guy I was dancing with last night? He smiled and waved at me, but I could only force a smile and nodded back. Hey, why the long face? If you're bored, come give me a hand. Then he dragged me over to his yard before I could reply. Once we're done, we rested on the front porch. Turns out his name was Royce. He'd just moved in with his dad and had enrolled at my school. I have to admit, he's quite the charmer. And within minutes, I felt comfortable enough to tell him about my unconventional life with mom. My mom has way too much free time. I wish she'd find a man. Only then she might quit nagging me. Meanwhile, my dad is always busy. If he had someone by his side, he'd want to spend more time with his family and be less of a workaholic. Wait a minute. So, how about we make them... A, a couple. couple! Today is the day. Our parents have really tight schedules, so planning out this date took a lot of effort. But so far, so good. I've told my mom to check out this vintage-themed restaurant in town while Royce told his dad that he wanted some father-son bonding time. Then, oops, we accidentally bump into each other and join tables. Look at my mom, gracefully fixing her hair and acting all charming. <laughs> I winked at Royce and then we made an excuse to leave the table so the adults could have some private time. It's been a little while. Let's see how the two are doing. Goodness gracious, was Mr. Phillips slurping on the spaghetti? He's making a mess and mom seemed really embarrassed. We immediately rushed inside to save this date before it's too late. At the end of the evening, we thought the worst was behind us. Mr. Phillips walked out without holding the door open for mom, making it swing back in her face. Gosh. Every beginning is difficult, I guess. <sighs> Over the next few days, Royce and I beat our brains out to try and find a way to save their budding relationship, and came down to this. Mom, I twisted my ankle during practice. Can you please pick me up? Hey, Dad, I forgot my wallet at the practice room. Could you pick it up on the way home? Then we waited until our parents showed up and went inside to lock the door and even turn off the lights for dramatic effect. I immediately heard my mom's horrified scream. Then the room went quiet. I bet Mr. Phillips calmed her down. We waited a few minutes before calling the security guard to open the door. But contrary to our expectations, the one being hysterical was Mr. Phillips, who was now sobbing in my mother's arms. Wait, what? Turns out Royce forgot that his dad, who always sleeps with a light on, is in fact nyctophobic. There goes plan B. This was bad. Everything kept going south, and the clock was ticking as Royce's dad had to leave for another business trip soon. We can't accept defeat like this. 
There must be something your dad's really good at, right? I don't know. He's good at fixing stuff. Ha! <laughs> Then we know what to do next. While Mom was taking a shower, I waited for my plan to set in motion. Three, two, one. Ah! L, help me! I ran over to her to see water shooting out from a broken faucet. After a couple of minutes of struggle, I called Royce's house for help, aka Mr. Phillips. As soon as he arrived, he went straight into the bathroom and helped Mom out of that pool. He looked way too cool, just like Superman. Now, time for his forte to speak up. As expected, he fixed it all in a blink, and Mom even invited the two of them to stay for dinner as a thank you. Great! During dinner, Mr. Phillips kept praising my mom's cooking. He admitted that this coziness reminded him of the good old days. Seeing things escalate between them, Royce and I finished quickly and excused ourselves to give them some time alone. My dad's right. I can't remember the last time we sat together as a family. Then he told me that his parents divorced a few years back, and due to his dad's work, they were always moving from place to place, which really wore him out. Seeing his sad gaze made me feel so bad for him. I just wanted to give him a hug. Hold on, what nonsense was I thinking? I immediately brushed off that weird thought, and we chatted until late. The next day at school, I was talking to Royce as usual when suddenly our conversation was interrupted. Oh my God, aren't you the new guy? How do you know him? Huh? Where did Daisy come from? And is befriending Royce something strange? Then she whispered to me that Royce's good looks hadn't gone unnoticed by other students. Wow, no wonder I kept feeling like we were being watched whenever we hung out at school. Daisy then proceeded to chime in between us and talk to Royce nonstop, even on our way home, when clearly her house was not in the same direction as ours. How annoying! But good news, back at home, Mum seemed to be floating on air. I caught her humming along to love songs, and she didn't nag me at all when I went to dance practice. Royce also said that his dad had been in a great mood too. Sparks were definitely flying between them. Our plan finally worked. Good job, sis. Uh huh. Was I really going to be his stepsister? I should be happy with this outcome, right? But what was this uneasy feeling? One day at practice, I walked in on Daisy and Royce and immediately felt awkward. So I just rolled myself into a corner. Why did I react that way, seeing them be so close? Is it possible that? I've fallen for him. This can't be. We're gonna be family. There's no way this can happen. After that day, I tried to avoid Royce. Despite his new girl, he still bothered me, but I kept my distance. I was brooding all the way home until I heard my mom talking on the phone as I entered the house. And I'll bake you some pecan pie, darling. Wait a minute. Royce and his dad were both allergic to pecan, so who's she being all lovey-dovey with? The next day, as usual, I told my mom I'd go to practice, but actually lingered outside the house to stalk on mom. I saw her on the couch, video calling some strange man. Oh gosh, did my mom really cheat on Royce's dad? How could she? Still in shock, I glumly lurked to Graffiti Alley and spotted Royce and Daisy there. They seemed to be talking about something really serious. So you already knew? Yeah, ages ago. But it's clear that we can't just force love on someone. So you mean to just give up and happily watch them see other people? Oh no! So they knew Mom was unfaithful to Mr. Phillips already? How embarrassing! Right at that moment, Daisy spotted me, so I frantically ran away. After school the following day, Daisy wanted to talk with me in private. However, it was not about what happened yesterday. Do me a favor and stop hovering around Royce all the time, will you? But Royce is my friend. I can't just stop seeing him because you said so. If you like him, be my guest. Suddenly, Daisy fell to the ground. Ouch! Why did you push me? Huh? What is she doing? At that exact moment, Royce showed up and worriedly checked on her. Okay, now I know what's going on. Sorry about that. Let me give you a hand. When she was just about to stand up, I shoved her. Now you know what my real push feels like. I noticed Royce's stunned look, but just walked off. Now that I don't seem so great in his eyes anymore, he'll stop approaching me. Sweetie, what's wrong? What's wrong? This is all your fault. If you didn't cheat on Mr. Phillips, everything would be fine. What do you mean, cheating on whom? Then my mom burst out laughing after I told her. Turns out they never dated. They both saw through our matchmaking plan early on, but decided to just be good friends. And the person I saw mom video calling with was her boyfriend. But she hadn't introduced him yet because they'd only started dating. But why set us up in the first place? 
Finally, I had the chance to tell her how I truly felt about being forced into her vintage world and not being able to pursue my love for street dancing. Mom was quiet for a second and then said, Gee, how silly I've been. I've been inspiring strangers to go after their dreams, but I stopped my own daughter from pursuing hers. I felt so much better after pouring my heart out. I also mentioned Royce's situation with his dad, and she promised to talk to him about it. Hang on. This means... Mom, so you and Mr. Phillips are just friends, right? Immediately, I ran off to find Royce, as if on cue the doorbell rang, and it was... Daisy! What game is she playing now? If she's here to mess around, come at me already. But surprisingly, Daisy apologized. I'm sorry, I was just blinded by jealousy, and there was nothing going on between me and Royce. He in fact already rejected me the day you saw us at the graffiti alley. Also, he asked me to give you this. I opened the box to see an adorable keychain with I love you on it. Oh my, is, is this a love confession? But there's also a note saying, I'm leaving for another city, till we meet again. No, no, no! I sprinted to his house right away. Oh lord, he's already packing! Without thinking, I hugged him and started sobbing. So, you read my message? Y yeah And what do you think? I, I feel the same, but you're leaving for real? Then, his smile turned playful, and he admitted he was just messing with me. Turns out he was going away, but only for a few days, for a dance competition. Really? That's awesome! But I can't forgive you for tricking me yet. So, yeah. Although we couldn't get our parents together, us two actually became a couple, so our matchmaking scheme isn't a total failure, right? <laughs> we were even able to change a few things for the better. For instance, Mom spoke to Royce's dad, and he agreed not to move for the time being so his son could settle in. Mom also promised to check in on him when his dad's away on business. As for our family, my mom no longer tried so hard to act like she's not living in 2023. She now sometimes includes modern elements in her vlogs as well, and I even become a regular guest on her channel. Hey Beans, today my fiancé and I are baking this fab coconut cake along with my daughter and our boyfriend. They are hip-hop dancers. Check out their channel if that's something you fancy. They're really the cat's pajamas. Hello, hallway. Hello, classmates. I, Taya, have finally returned to school after three months. What the what? What's with everyone's goggled-eyed looks? The boys were all slipping off their chairs. Had I morphed into Jenna Ortega at the summer break or something? Oh, turns out there's a new girl standing behind me. Are you the new student? Let me show you around. Oh, boys, weren't they forgetting something? Their existing girlfriends? Which they were only with because of me. Anyway, I'm Taya, aka Stalking Lord, ruler of all information in school. Just give me a full name and some of your allowance money, and I can dig up the 411 on your crush. These idiots only impressed their girlfriends due to my incredible talent. And now they're all over this Mira girl? <laughs> Do they have no shame? Unlike me, once I like someone, then my eyes don't wander. The one and only Adonis of my heart is Colin. He's so sweet. He has this shining halo when he plays basketball. And most importantly, he's flawlessly handsome. But I hadn't told him how I felt. Because, as you can see, he's not short of admirers and nothing seems to impress him. So I was still trying to figure out the best way to get on his radar. My everyday joy was quietly observing him from afar. But wait! What happened to his car? What's with all the silly scribbles? Finn, the troublemaker, and his minions were standing nearby laughing at my Colin. Ugh! Those notorious rebels for some reason seem to thrive off tormenting poor Col. So you're a vandal now, huh, Finn? Look who's talking. Oh, I see. The new team captain? Finn threw the spray can at Call, then left. Why isn't Colin doing anything? Maybe he doesn't want to rise to such petty idiots? Then let me handle this. I know exactly what his Achilles heel is. A few days later, I secretly put a small box in Finn's locker and watched on as his minions gathered around excitedly gawping at it. They too must be amazed that their big man's finally getting a love confession time, huh? Finn smugly opened the box but then freaked out and threw it in the air. The cockroaches escaped and ran rampant across the hallway. It's pure chaos. <laughs> a bunch of wimps. Oh, he finally discovered the note I attached. Finn was fuming and shouted that he would find the instigator. 
I could see Colin walk off from the crowd. If only he knew what I did for him, he'd be so impressed. But nope. Finn took zero notice of my warning and continued to bother Colin. Ugh, I can't let him get away with this. That gremlin needs to learn some serious lessons. Finn always stays late after school to sneak up to the terrace and practice skateboarding. So I schemed to get him stuck in the elevator. He'd be trapped there for at least an hour. Enough time for that claustrophobic peacebreaker to read the second warning letter and apologize for what he did. There he is. Time to leave. I ducked my head, gently stepping out of the elevator, when suddenly Finn grabbed my wrist and pulled me back. How long are you going to play Beauty Saves the Hero, huh? How could he know? It turns out that Finn's minions happened to see a bunch of pictures of Colin decorated with hearts in my locker, and they even found a list of Finn's weaknesses in my bag. Just one cute puppy can make him scream like a little girl? Suddenly, the elevator stopped. Oh no. I didn't mean to trap myself here like this, with this punk. You did this too, right? You've gone too far. Tell you what, be my servant for a month and I'll let you off. <laughs> As if. Stay away from Colin and I'll stay away from you. You don't even know his true face. I doubt you'd still like him if you did. Anyway, I heard that the principal is desperate to get his hands on the cockroach culprit. Your choice. Do you want to pay the price to him or to me? Ugh, he's got me. But what does this Finn know about Colin that I don't? Okay, just one month. And don't think it'll be easy to be my boss. Heh, <laughs> nice. Then I have first order for you already. And so, I had to sing and dance to entertain him until someone came to rescue us. In the following days, the bossy Finn kept sending me on dumb errands and rebuking me for every single thing. Hmm. There's no denying that this guy was a gifted painter. It's just a shame about his lousy personality. As soon as someone spotted us, he immediately skated away, leaving me running after him. He didn't study either, so I had to do all his homework. He even made me run around the school just to buy him some snacks. This time, Finn asked me to put this cake on Miss Watterson's desk. Did he finally do something nice? No! How foolish I was! Turns out he'd injected food coloring into it to prank our teacher, and he took a video of me placing it on her desk to slander me. You have to stay after school and film me every skateboarding session, or else I'll tell her. That guy has gone too far. Is he forcing me to work over time now? And since I have been busy being Finn's puppet, I didn't even have time to look after Colin anymore. I've tried several times asking why he hates Colin that much, but every time I mentioned it, he got all touchy. And there's one more thing that intrigued me. There was something up with Finn's leg. Hey, does your left leg hurt? It's perfectly fine. Don't act like we're close. Why do you have to be so sensitive? No wonder no one likes you. Oh, please. Being liked by someone like you would be a nightmare. The only girl on my level in this place is Mira. She's sweet and gentle. Besides, she's only been here five minutes and she has already established an art club. He can't compare the Little Mermaid to Princess Merida. We're basically just different. Heard you're the one who knows everything at school, right? Find out about her for me. It might be our last mission. For what? Are you going to put her in trouble too? <laughs> well, this proves that a know-it-all like you doesn't know anything about me. It's just like you don't understand your Colin at all. Just give this to Mira. Remember to do it in a private place so she doesn't feel awkward. Oh, he even drew the card himself. This side of rebellious Finn really surprised me. But come to think of it, if Finn was too busy with love, he wouldn't torture me anymore. Under Finn's instructions, I went to school early the next day to find his muse. As soon as I saw Mira, I immediately chased after her, but was she talking to Colin? Why did they look so sneaky? I don't get it. Why do you want to hide this? I've just transferred here. I don't want your harem bothering me. So in front of others, just pretend we're strangers, okay? Huh, fine. See you after school then. I'll pick you up. Okay, see ya honey bun. What was that? Are they dating? This isn't good news at all. Right at that moment, Finn came to ask me. Why haven't you passed her the card? What happened? Then I told Finn what I just saw. Colin offered to pick her up after school. Then Mira even called him honey bun. Looks like my first love has ended before it had even began. But they don't even have the guts to make it public? Colin doesn't deserve Mira. But that's okay. I've got a plan. 
So according to his scheme, basically, we needed to separate them. Then I'd take Colin, and Finn would take Mira. That day after school, I assisted Finn in flattening Colin's tires. I know, I hated causing trouble for my beloved Colin. But this is the only way to give Finn an opening to offer Mira a ride because she was in a hurry to get to her ballet class. The day after, Finn helped me draw Colin as a partner for my chemistry project. During class, I was super excited and nervous when sitting next to my Adonis, until I noticed Colin writing something to Mira and leaving it on her lab table. I immediately dragged Finn to steal the letter. Don't forget, today we have to pick Tommy up, and Mom asked what you wanted for dinner. Was their relationship progressing this fast? Colin had already introduced Mira to his family. We couldn't let the two just simply meet up like that, so we stalked and followed them to a preschool. Upon catching sight of them with a the little boy, Finn suddenly blurted, What? Don't tell me that boy's their son. No, it's just Colin's little brother. Tommy, age 5.5. Favorite color? Green. Favorite food? Ice cream. Anyway, my eyes itch seeing them happy with each other. Let's sabotage them. So, we kidnapped the kid. Oh, it's not as bad as you think. We just took him for ice cream without telling Colin and Mira. That kid doesn't look worried at all. Why be worried? You saved me from those boring two. So, Tommy, do you know that Mira is having dinner with your family tonight? Um, yeah. Mira, she stays at our house every day. What? what? Another chocolate ice cream, please, then I'll talk. I gave him a new cup of ice cream right away. This kid was smart. Well, she stays with us because she's our cousin. What? what? Why did she call Colin Honeybun then? Maybe because mom calls him by this embarrassing nickname all the time. Right at that moment, Mira rushed into the ice cream shop in panic. So you guys are cousins? Why hide it from everyone? It's because she's afraid people will find out that her parents are bankrupts. No, that's not true. Don't listen to that kid. Yes, it is. I heard you telling Colin all about it. Okay, that's the reason. But please, don't tell anyone about this. I quickly said that we would agree if Mira went on a date with Finn. The guy looked shocked. Didn't think I could be so quick-witted, huh? Surprisingly, Mira smiled and said she didn't mind going on a date with Finn anyway. She always thought he's kind of cute. Huh, so everything is just that easy? <laughs> that means my servant life will finally end here. Only then did Colin rush over. Tommy, why are you here? Oh, I just got lost so they saw me and bought ice cream to calm me down. They didn't kidnap me at all. Oh, Tommy. So that's how Mira and Finn got their first date. The deal between me and Finn is considered to be over then. But why do I feel so empty instead of relieved? Suddenly, something hit my leg. Aren't you supposed to be on a date? I knew my servant would still be waiting for the boss right here. Turns out, their date was a bit... odd. Mira didn't seem to like Finn's antics, and Mira's neediness wound Finn up. So this is definitely their last date. I laughed out loud, but Finn quickly stopped me. How about you and Colin? Still don't have the guts to confess? I may have successfully protected my Adonis, but I don't know why. It's like there's something that keeps holding me back from confessing. Finn immediately took me to get a makeover. He's a very enthusiastic consultant and seems to be very knowledgeable about Colin's tastes. When seeing me in the new dress, he even said I looked cute. Okay, where had rude Finn gone? What do you think of me and Colin becoming a couple? What do you mean? I mean, you used to say that Colin was terrible and all, but now you're willing to help us get together. Actually, he's not that bad, and I'm doing this for you. You like him, right? Yeah. I like Colin, right? Hmm, why did my feelings seem vague? What had gone into my head? The next day at school, when I appeared in front of Colin with my new look, he seemed impressed. And you know what? He even suggested going on a date with me. Um, yay! But I'm not sure I can last a whole date in this tight dress and super inconvenient high heels. During our date, Colin was just as sweet and caring as I expected him to be. But weirdly, it didn't move me at all. <sighs> Is it because I'm too focused on keeping balance on this stupid high heels? Taya, do you want to be my prom date? If he'd asked me this a month ago, I would have leaped in joy and sung out yes. But right now, I just stood there, silent. <sighs> I see. I really like this version of you, but your previous look might suit you better. 
You seem more comfortable and carefree around Finn. Oh, Finn. I didn't realize he has always been on my mind till now. I'd long to be free of him, but now he's all I could seem to think about. Curious, I asked Colin why Finn didn't like him, and I finally found out the truth. Turns out, they used to be friends and were once on the basketball team together. Finn was the best player back then, but at one practice, he was doing a high jump when Colin also jumped to get the ball. They collided and Finn injured his knee, which ended his professional basketball dreams. Colin then became the star player. Meanwhile, Finn turned rebellious and had resented Colin ever since. Feeling guilty still, Colin was willing to suffer all the tormenting Finn had done to him. That's why Finn always caused you trouble. He still got me a makeover though, to match your style and become a thing with you. Oh, that explains why you seem to be exactly my type. He knows me too well. But, Taya, you like Finn, right? If so, you should go and tell him. That hit me hard. Maybe I've been trying to deny it the whole time, but I really did feel the most comfortable around Finn, and I miss hanging out with him. But he seems to like someone soft and girly, like Mira. Guess you're gonna find it out for yourself. So I gathered all my courage and came to the skate park to find Finn. He saw me from afar. Hey, how was your date? You look the part. I didn't expect you to be back this early. I know about the secret between you and Colin and how you lost your opportunity of becoming a professional basketball player. If my bestie hates him, I hate him too. Actually, I don't hate him. I just hate how useless I am. Don't talk about yourself like that. You know that you're really talented, right? You're the first guy I've met who can skate, paint, and well, is good looking at the same time. Be more confident, will you? You know, no one's ever seen nice things like that in me before. But this doesn't matter, because you like Colin. I did like Colin, but we realized we're not actually a very good match. After an awkward silence, we both raised our voices at the same time. You I know, think- Oh, oh you, you go, go first. first. I'm listening. I think I like you. Um, well, that was I was about to say. Let me be your servant this time. Hi, I'm Kate, and I'm doing something totally thrilling. I'm running away! Just picturing my parents' worried faces makes me smile. Why, you ask? They deserve it for trying to send me, their beloved only daughter, to some disgusting girl's boarding school. Yuck! No parties, the grossest uniform, bossy supervisors, and no hot-muscled guys! Ugh! That place is for nerds, not me, an it girl and the founder of Clique Chic our school's exclusive group for the hottest, most sought-after girls. To be a part of the club, you must be really fashionable, you know? I'm talking about a wardrobe full of the latest designer must-haves, manicured nails, and the glossiest hair. Only girls as dazzling as us can make the school hallway our catwalk stage. As one of us, your life will be filled with endless parties and super cute jocks fighting for your attention. Studying and homework? That's not our thing. Those loser nerds who are chasing after us will take care of it. Hey, do you know those people? I looked outside and saw a group of bodyguards who were yelling and trying to force my cab to stop. Ugh, this was so uncalled for. 500 bucks if you can get rid of them. The driver immediately sped up. <laughs> Ordinary people will do anything for a little bit of money. He dropped me off at a service station, and I quickly snuck inside and hid in the restrooms. Ew! This place was gross! Gosh! Those bodyguards were loitering about outside so no one could leave or enter without them seeing. How tragic! This was so stupid. All my parents needed to do was let me stay at home for the summer. But no, they sent those bodyguards after me to ruin my life! Suddenly, a cubicle door flung open and knocked into me. Ouch! Are you blind? What are those glasses even for? I... I'm sorry. The girl quickly apologized, then she bent down to pick her fallen stuff up. But when she looked up, I gasped in shock. Holy guacamole! What in the world? She looked exactly like me. I mean, at least her face did. Her style was disgusting and old-fashioned. Ew. But given my dire situation, I came up with an amazing idea. Okay, 
So, this is weird. Do you want to make some money? And I mean a lot of money? She gave me this dumbfounded look. Ew, I hope I didn't get frown lines like she did when I screwed up my face. They were ghastly. I have a really lucrative job for you. As you can see, we have similar faces. Freaky, but fortunate. So I need you to pretend to be me and live my rich life for a month or two. Here's my Twitter account. Just skim through it. You can learn everything about me there. It should be enough for you to play the part and avoid my family's suspicion. And here's your payment. I rifled through my bag and handed her the rest of the cash. Jeez, this must be a huge amount for her, as her eyes lit up like she was seeing money for the first time, and she immediately took it. We quickly exchanged clothes, and as instructed, she went outside to hand herself over to the bodyguards. Ah, freedom! Now bring on one long, hot summer of fun. But first, I have to go shopping. Wearing these old-fashioned, disgusting clothes made me want to puke. Oh no! My parents have locked all of my credit cards! I can't even buy a soya milk ice latte now! Oof! How could my parents be so cruel? The worst part is, I had stupidly given all my cash and my phone to that girl! With no other options left, I reluctantly searched the girl's bag. A few old-fashioned clothes, some stupid books, and an unbranded lipstick? Huh? Was that all? How can people live like this? But, hmm, what's this? In her small notebook was a train ticket and an offer letter to work at Homestay Allen. So, looks like she's going there for a summer job. Hopefully that homestay has a bath with scented candles and a pool for me to sunbathe by. I need to work on my tan. I was glad to get off that flea-ridden thing and breathe in some fresh air. Hmm, now where was my ride? There was a short, chubby old man holding a board with the name Clara on it. Ah, the name on the train ticket was Clara. So this meant he was here for me? Ugh, he didn't even have flowers with him and he could have at least combed his hair. So, turns out, that's Danny, the manager and owner of the homestay. Honestly, if it wasn't for the circumstances, I would never have set foot in this stupid place. Oh, how the day got worse. Without even being allowed to rest my weary feet, Danny gave me work. Housekeeping. It was a joke, wasn't it? My nails were not made for menial jobs. Life here was horrible. I had to get up so stupidly early that it was still dark out, then clean a dozen dusty old bedrooms. After that, I would do the laundry, dry the towels and bedding, fold them, and arrange them neatly into each room. At noon, I also had to help the chef here, Anna, prepare lunch, and I was also forced to wash a mountain of gross dishes. I had never done such silly chores like this at home. Instead, they were always done for me. Didn't expect them to be this exhausting. <laughs> you should put them in order, so they won't break. Ugh, where did this nosy guy come from? Are you lecturing me? I replied crankily and walked away. Suddenly... Oh no, this was the ninth time I'd broken stuff since I'd arrived here. And that wasn't counting my poor broken nails. I quickly bent down to clean up, but ouch! I cut my finger on one of the pieces. The guy quickly ran over and bandaged my wound. Bond, that's my name. Huh? What's this? Did he just wink at me? My heart was pounding. Um, I mean, he was cute. Yeah, he was really cute. Um, I'm K- Clara. Go do something else. Leave this to me. Realizing that I'd been staring at Bond for a while, I hurriedly got up and rushed to the kitchen. Nice to meet you, Clara. I'm your new colleague. Well, that's not so bad. At least I have someone to share my workload with and to chat. The next morning, I was cleaning the floor, half asleep, when Bond came over, put an AirPod in my ear, and winked at me. Imagine you're dancing, then you won't feel so tired anymore. 
Okay, this sounded kinda lame, but at least no one else was around to see me, so I decided to just go with it. So I gave it a try, with Bond, <laughs> and I relaxed a little. Well, I didn't expect it to be so much fun. That night, as I was about to turn off the light, I heard a knock at the door. It was Bond. He wanted to show me a secret, so he took my hand and led me to the beach. Yes, we were holding hands, and his hand was really warm. He took me to a sandy beach and shone his flashlight at his feet. Something was moving under the fine white sand. Ew! What was that? I clung to his arm in fear. Aww, little turtles, I exclaimed as they slowly emerged from under the sand. Yes, they're cute, aren't they? Let's give them a hand. They have to get to the sea before dawn. I hesitated because I thought this was so stupid. When the sun rises, they'll be easily spotted and eaten by predators. Fine. Since Bond pleaded, I had no choice but to sacrifice my sleep to escort the baby turtles to the sea. Why would their mom just abandon her babies like that? Their mom protected them when they were eggs, and now it's time for them to start fending for themselves. I bet they don't mind. You see, they're all trying their best to crawl towards the sea. But it was us who helped them. Then they'll be very grateful to you. And so am I. Whoa, I never felt like this before. It felt like my heart was aching, but in a good way? Thinking about it, I suppose this was the first time I'd ever helped anyone before. Now I kinda understood why my parents did what they did. They just wanted me to be more independent and stop hanging around with those vain, show-off girls. They sure would be pleased if they could see me now, with this sweet and gentle guy. He was the total opposite of the rich boys back home. When I was hurt, he made sure I was okay. He opened my eyes to new experiences, and he didn't try to impress me with dumb flowers and expensive gifts. I've been thinking about Bond all day, and this is the 1,001st time I've peeked at him. I think I'll have to confess my feelings before I go crazy. So that evening, after finishing all my work, I knocked on Bond's door. Huh? Why was a teary-eyed Miss Anna standing there? Then she told me the shocking truth. Bond had left without saying goodbye. Panicked, I walked into the room, but there was nothing left of his. Nothing! No! This couldn't be happening! I hadn't even had a chance to confess yet! The next day, I felt so down, it sucked not having Bond here. But then in my zombie state, I accidentally picked up the newspaper at the front desk. O-M-G. On the front page was a picture of... Bond! God, I couldn't believe it. He was the son of a famous billionaire and they were looking for him. Turns out, I wasn't the only one who'd run away from home. But why did he leave so suddenly? He could have told me the truth. He could have said bye. Ugh! My untold feelings for him felt like an unreachable splinter in my side. I couldn't carry on like this. I needed to find Bond. With my meager salary, I got on the train back to the city, imagining seeing Bond again. This is without a doubt the most nervous I'd ever been in my entire life. It didn't matter how much I pleaded my case and explained that I was Bond's friend. The security guards refused to let me in. <sighs> I was about to leave when suddenly I saw Bond from afar. He was with a girl. What in the world is this? I tried to strain my eyes to see. My god, isn't that me? No. It's the girl I hired to pretend to be me. What was she doing with Bond? And why did they look so close? Could it be? Yes, it's me, Kate, here again. When I traded places with my doppelganger to avoid being stuck in some ghastly summer school, I didn't expect to end up penniless and having to work in some dusty old homestay. But I suppose it wasn't all bad as I got to meet Bond. 
So, imagine my surprise when I discovered that not only was he a runaway rich kid like me, but I also caught him hanging out with moi. Well, the other me. Ugh. I hired her to pretend to be me, not to be with my man. Um, looks like it was time to return to my normal life. Miss, without a letter of invitation, I can't let you in. Are you kidding me? Why do I need an invitation to enter my own home? How could they not recognize me? Right at that moment, Clara gracefully got out of a luxury car and entered my house. I shouted over to her, but on seeing me, she gave me a confused look. Then she whispered something to the security guard and went straight inside. Sorry, Miss Kate doesn't know you. Please leave. Huh? How dare she? She wasn't Miss Kate. I was. Did she really think she could treat me like this? Ugh! I'd show her who the real rich girl was. But as I was leaving, I caught a glimpse of myself in a car window. Oh my gosh, I looked horrendous. My once bouncy curls, perfectly made up face, and glamorous clothing were no more. Instead, I had a greasy ponytail, my skin was completely bare, and I was in worn old clothes. No wonder the security guards didn't recognize me. I barely recognized my own self. Well, well, well. How comfortable it is to be back in my room, doll up again, and just take back what's mine. How did you get in here? This is my room, remember? I can run away by myself, so you bet I can sneak back into my own room. Listen here, fake me. Mission's over. It's time you left. What mission? Are you crazy? Get your filthy hands off my stuff! Wow, immerse yourself in the role much, huh? Enough. Now give me my life back. What if I don't? Don't you dare? You think my parents won't recognize me? Seeing as I've been impersonating you for an entire month without question, I doubt it. Besides, they're on a month-long business trip in Dubai. So, who will help you now, huh? O-M-G. She was so arrogant, unruly, and obnoxious. Worst of all, she reminded me of someone. Me! Well, the old me. Why didn't I realize before how awful I actually was? Ignoring Clara's defiant face, I took out my phone and made a FaceTime call to my parents. They had to spot it was me straight away, right? Wrong. They gave us both looks of shocked confusion, and they couldn't seem to tell us apart. So they told the two of us to stay at home for the time being, while they made arrangements to come back. Huh, is it that hard to distinguish your own daughter from a hick? But anyway, she'll be out of here soon enough. The next morning, we went back to school. Claire looked so trashy in her tiny miniskirt. Jeez, this wasn't a nightclub. Oh, Kate, you look outstanding. Where did you buy it from? <laughs> That's it. My friends will always be able to tell me apart from a fraud. But hang on. No! They were moving toward... Clara! Huh? Are they actually praising her? Wow, there's another Kate here. But it's a faulty version. A lame one. <laughs> My panicked feeling increased as all my friends and Clara burst out laughing. You guys don't recognize me? I'm the real Kate, the one you all idolize, the trendsetter around here. Everyone looked at me in bewilderment and then back to Clara. Look at her pathetic appearance. She's just trying to be a copy of me. After that, Clara and her friends left. Jeez. All it took was one summer away for Clara to turn into me. Ugh! Why doesn't anyone recognize me? Seeing Clara living my life with my friends was driving me crazy. I was now seen as the copycat version of my own self. Ugh! No way was I losing to this crafty charlatan. So the next day, I decided to show everyone how charismatic I was. After all, form is temporary but class is permanent. And soon, 
everyone would realize who the real Kate was. Right? <laughs> I waited until Claire was out of the way. Then I went over to my group and started recalling some of our old stories that only the real me could possibly know. When Clara returned, oh my, she looked furious. <laughs> One day, when I just entered the cafeteria, I saw my group making a nerdy girl run errands for them. Poof, your mother is the school's measly janitor. So you too are just our dog's body. Now hurry up and go get us some ketchup. When the girl was bringing it to them, one of them tripped her foot and made her face fall down on the plate of sauce. The whole group burst into laughter. I rushed to help her up and scowled at the clique chic girls. <sighs> they may have looked stylish, but beneath it all, they were monsters. But worst of all, it was my fault, as it was my group. I'd basically created them. What's wrong with her mom being a janitor? That doesn't mean she has to serve you guys. As I can see, all of your legs and arms are working fine. So go get stuff yourself. Wow, look who it is. Do you all believe she's just a lousy replica of mine now? The true clique chic Kate wouldn't blurt out such nonsense. Clique chic all looked me up and down, then gave me disgusted looks. Too much of a saint. What a hypocrite. Kate would never say that. Obviously, she's the fake one. Those whispers made me so angry that I turned as red as the ketchup. Fine. Pretend to be me all you want. But you and I both know I'm the real me. And I'm better than ever. You won't be able to keep up that act for much longer. And then to the surprise of the others, I stormed off. That night... Social media was awash with my news. Can you believe I was actually being mocked for being the copycat while Clara was being praised? Talk about ridiculous. I scrolled through my old photos and scanned over some of the thousands of likes and compliments. I'd lived in the admiration of everyone. Ugh. Maybe I needed to go back to being the arrogant and snobby old Kate, and then everything would be over. Right? <sighs> Only, I couldn't do it. I couldn't be that heartless and selfish version of myself anymore. So how could I end this whole mess of my own making? Ah, there was another way. If there's only one Kate who showed up, there wouldn't be any more fakers. Oh, seems like it's going to be a really good day at school today. But such a shame that our sweet Clara might not be able to join us. Everyone greeted me warmly as they thought that the imposter who was smeared on social media yesterday had been too embarrassed to show her face. Even so, I didn't want to hang out with these stuck-up mean girls anymore. The clique chic group should be disbanded. As I was deep in thoughts, out of nowhere, a nerd blocked my way with a bouquet of flowers. He timidly held them out to me and people began buzzing and pointing. The girls in the group took pictures of him and urged me forward. That's our Kate with her irresistible charms. <laughs> Someone's essay's ready for next week. I hesitated, not knowing what to say. I didn't want to accept love from someone I didn't like. People started to frown at my silence. Then a few voices of doubt arose. Why doesn't she accept the bouquet as usual? Perhaps she's not? I saw red. Suddenly, I found this whole pretending to flirt with someone just to have them do our homework absurd. And above all else, it wasn't fair to him. You don't have the guts to do it, do you? Because you're not Kate. Startled, I turned around to see Clara taking the bouquet of flowers from the nerd's hand. I snatched it back angrily. He likes me, not you. He likes Kate, and I'm Kate. That Clara was just so shameless to say that. Did she really think she could be me? Did she think being mean and snobby made her the it girl? How shallow of her. Yes, if it was Kate from the past, I would have received that bouquet and made him do my homework. But the present Kate won't do that. Do it yourself. Stop relying on others to do everything for you. As for you, Clara, let me tell you this. Despite your best efforts, you'll never be me. 
Once a liar, always a liar, you counterfeit. I was done here. I was the real me. And if they couldn't see that, then whatever. So I walked away. Suddenly, a hand pulled me back. It was the nerd. Sorry, but I really don't like you in that way. You really don't have feelings for me? Are you sure? Upon his words, he took off his wig, glasses, and the mole on his face. Bond? Is it really you? I was so shocked that I couldn't believe my eyes. Bond handed me the bouquet and said, You won't say no, will you? Of course, how could I say no? I led him to an empty classroom to talk. Um, why are you here? And what's with the disguise? After I left the homestay, I went back home. My parents did what they always do, and tried to make out like money could solve everything by throwing an extravagant party. I was lingering out of the way when, to my surprise, you walked in with your family. Huh? What party? Oh, he must mean Clara. He continued, I went over to talk to you, but you acted like you'd never met me before, so it didn't take me long to work out this girl wasn't you. I was worried, so I called the homestay and they said you'd left. Determined to solve this mystery, I went to your school and found everyone was in a frenzy, as out of nowhere two Kates had appeared. Both of them were it girls and nothing like the homestay Kate I knew, so in order to suss out the real one, I disguised myself. And my plan worked, as here you are. You're such a trickster! <laughs> but I still have one question. Why did you suddenly leave the homestay that day? So, turns out his passion for marine life led him to run away from his disapproving parents and go to a coastal homestay. Only, when he realized from the newspaper that his parents were looking for him, he didn't want to get the homestay into trouble so he returned home. You should have at least said goodbye to me. I was so down when you left like that. Did you know that? Kate, I'm truly sorry. I never meant to upset you. Actually, I'm kind of crazy about you. After that, Bond drove me home. And guess what? Looks like my parents were back earlier than expected. As for the fake Clara, She'd already fled the scene with a load of my clothes and makeup. But, ugh, whatever. At least she'd finally gone. So, what now? Well, I'm dating Bond, and I'm so happy with him. At weekends, I go to the coast and help him with his marine animal research, which is actually a lot of fun. And I don't even mind having salty air lips. <laughs> I never take my parents for granted anymore and I never force other students to carry out dumb errands for me. And of course, clique chic was no longer a thing. Everyone at school had grown used to the new and improved version of me. Obviously, I'll always be the it girl who sets the trends, but only the decent ones. <laughs> <laughs>